The Heroes of Greyhawk is a game played by adults and recorded for an adult audience. Sometimes we use adult language and explore adult topics. Consider yourself a winner. Welcome to the Superior Adventures Guild. My name's Dave, your humble dungeon master and a host for the Heroes of Greyhawk live stream. Welcome. Uh, really excited to uh, have you here with us tonight as we dive into another game. Uh, and I, I'm so lucky because I get to play this game with my friends every darn week. And uh, this week is like no other because we're deep in the thick of a massive battle. But we'll get, all to, get to all of that in just a minute. Let me first introduce you to... My besties, the yet to be named gang, Homlet's heroes, perhaps. The Homlet omelets. The Homleteers. The Homleteers. Ooh, there you go. That's juicy. Hi, guys. How's it going? Got a ring to it. Hey. <laughs> what up? Well, <laughs> welcome back. Great to see you. Kirk is speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah. Um, glad glad oh. that you are speaking, that is. My friends. Let's go around the table here before we dive into this game. Introduce ourselves, tell folks where they can find you, and a little bit about your character, who you're playing, and maybe if you want to share a little something about uh, how they're viewing the situation in Hamlet. That might be kind of fun. Let's go ahead and start with tonight. We're going to start with Christian Bleak Season. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm me, and you're you, and I'm doing all right. You know, the holidays are winding down, and that's always a good time because it means that a couple more days, and then it's going to be vacation. Yeah, pretty nice. much. I, I was still putting in grades today, so I'm not quite official on vacation yet. But, Sheesh. you know, you do what you can. Hey, in Bleak Season, you can find me at the Bleak Season on Twitters, as well as my website, bleakseason.com, which, unlike Dave's website, does not, you know, contain anything uh, to intimate in nature oh. um you can find me right here guilds of here playing tons of game doing all sorts of stuff uh you know always hanging out i'm like the uh crazy uncle who just won't leave the house after the holidays can't get rid of him you no know, i get in that lazy boy put my feet up <laughs> i'm like i'm like uncle buck you know i'd be mm. if this was the 80s i'd be played by john candy fellow canadian proud of john yeah. candy's body of work he was a uh, tremendous um <laughs> Comedian. Canadian bacon was fantastic. That's right. Yep. And true. It's a true story. Did you know it's a true story? We'll have to dive and, deep uh, into that at another time. We should do a Whoa. Canadian bacon and know that it was TTRPG. A true story. Yeah, it's a we true should. story. <laughs> we should. TTRPG. Uh, I'm sure Free Legal probably already has the rights to that uh, IP. Yeah, we should get on that. Yeah. Um, anyways, I play Lachlan, Feldspar, Dwarven, Cleric, and right now sitting on zero spell slots and three hit points. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, I wasn't quite ready to meet my god yet, but I guess uh, I guess it's about to happen. Uh, I uh, will sum it up uh, very pithily by quoting George Clooney in "O Brother, Where Art Thou?" <clears throat> We're in a tight spot now. Thank you, thank you no for that. <laughs> yep, I don't look like George Clooney, but I mean, if your eyes were closed, you'd think the voice. <clears throat> We're in a tight spot now. I like it. Thank yeah. you for that. Uh, let's didn't jump work. over to Kirk. Hi, Kirk. That didn't, wor didn't work on me. I closed my eyes and everything. You closed them too tight, and it cut off the oxygen to your brain. Is that oh, how it God, works? God, yeah, and it's all coming back. Whoa. Oh, oh, hey, I'm Kirk. It's all coming back to me now. Um, most of my brain is in at the dump now um, in a small plastic bag. You kept your brains in your beard? Yeah. It's like the Samson okay, man. the Samson effect. Um, Poor guy. Where was I where was I going with this again? Gosh, what what is it like to think Straight to hell? I don't know. Who are you Kirk? playing? Yeah. Kirk. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Ah, oh, I'm here. So I'm playing Norb Nair. He's a lot smarter than I am. Um Yep. <laughs> Oh, techie woman, thank you. She's like, let's move this along. Here's, here's some advantages. <laughs> One advantage per player, a my friends. Thank Ooh, you very nice. much, Techie. Appreciate Aww. you. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm in disguise. This is my incognito. You look great, man. You got a shirt with like, buttons or something, or no, a collar yeah, at least. A and a zipper. 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 This is a, you're turning over a new leaf here. <laughs> He's keep that up. Keep nobody yeah. wants to see that. He's here to work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kirk. Who are you playing tonight? Oh, I, I I mentioned that, didn't I? I, I, I mentioned Norb. Norb Nair. He's a smart guy. He's a barbarian. He may have chopped some stuff in half last session. Oh yeah. Um, and 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 had some anger issues. Um, he hasn't had a conversation with anyone about his anger issues yet. Um, I don't feel like I've, I've really had the chance to, to really, you know, explode with anger. Mm. Um, oh, you've quite. had the chance. You just haven't done it. Yep. Well, you just wait. Oh, oh my. I'm waiting. That's a promise and a threat at the same time. Thanks a lot, Kirk. Glad you're back, buddy. Let's jump <laughs> over to Andy. Hey, what's Hi. up, everybody? My name is Andy also known as Andy G3D here on Twitch and on our Discord server. You should come check it out. It's pretty sweet. We like to use a lot of memes for things and it's <laughs> fun. Anyways, you'll find me here Tuesday nights on this game and occasionally I produce stuff for this channel and it's a lot of fun and I can't wait to get back into it tonight. Oh, hell yeah. Who are you playing? Oh, did I forget that part? I don't know. I'm playing Jasmine Adelar, <laughs> second level human rogue, who is eager to get to third level. You guys are only second level? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see if he makes it to third level. Who knows? Anything's possible in this game. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, Andy. Glad you're back. Hi, Nick. Good to see you, buddy. There's somebody back there looming in the darkness. Um, Ashley, let's jump over to you. Hi. Hey. Hey, everybody. I'm Ashley, Minnesota Muse 99 on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on the Discord. You can find me on our Facebook page that we never mention. Facebook page. Um, and uh, you can also find me on Wednesday nights for New Varden, um, where I play a sentient rock. <laughs> Super fun. Um, all right. And I'm playing tonight, Xanthi, the bright golden-eyed girl uh, who is totally a normal human. She shoots magic. That sounds suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I thought she was a totally normal human until just this moment. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, my God. Uh, Mag? Like the bright yellow eyes are, yeah, are no, some that, kind of a funny. give, like a tell. Yeah, like, you know, I just totally you know, normal. I'm not gonna judge someone on their eyes. You know? No, no, no. Um, and oh gosh, I I will answer the question that nobody I don't think anybody else did. Uh what do you think about the situation in Hamlet? Um, I think that we have barely any hit points. <laughs> we have barely any spells in this. We've just had two <laughs> encounters, and now what I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are, what did Clooney call it? A tight spot now? Huh? It's time to go to bed. We're in a tight spot now. Yep, you guys are. There's no question Take about nice it. Long rest. Well, I'm glad that you made it through the last session. And look, if that was the last one that we that we have, the last full session, it was a good one. Yeah. We should all be proud of it. It was a lot of fun. This we'll is where I, we die, guys. We'll, <laughs> I'm going to, if we all die, I'm going to reroll as Xanthi's brother who's come looking for her and what's happened to her. And I'm going to Ooh. set this fucking place on fire. I'm going to reroll oh. as, Funny you as, say that. as Lachlan's god. Lachlan's um, god. And be overpowered for the rest of the game. Well, see, I, I know things about my god that Lachlan doesn't, and I don't think you want to go there. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be him, and I'm not going to do anything. In fact, see, I'm going to make right a away, pacifist. Right away you said him, so, you know. Her, right away they, in trouble. it. Mm -hmm. you, you guys are so close to the truth on all of these matters. It's it's frightening. It's terrifying. I love it. All the backstory, all the juice, all the secrets are yet to be revealed, folks, including whether or not these people will survive this encounter in Hamlet. Um, before we dive in, into the game, I want to make sure that we uh, we do a quick 
a uh, rundown of some announcements. Um, we have tomorrow night, as Ashley alluded to, our New of Arden game, Wednesday night, New of Arden. We are halfway through this eight session arc and we're unraveling some really cool, like political intrigue stuff and some uh, sort of like family ties with Alex P. Keaton's kind of thing. And it's just really cool. And Ashley, if anybody can play a, a sentient rock, it's Ashley and just some really cool moments. If you guys want to check it out, uh, all that stuff is over on our Twitter uh, archive. Nope. YouTube archive. There we go. Um, go check it out. It's really good. And that's from our friends at uh, Adventure Slang Productions that are just killing it with this this new world. It's so fun. Um, so we've got that coming up. Um, I want to say that we've also got uh, to thank our sponsors. Look, we've got a giveaway uh, tonight from CZ RPG. Our friends uh, continue to support us for what end we know not. But tonight we're giving away a copy, a digital copy of the Great Library, you guys. This is a full-fledged setting and adventure encounter that you can drop into whatever game that you happen to be playing. Highly recommend that you type exclamation mark drawing to get in on the action, and I'm making sure that, yes, it is indeed active, so you can now enter to win. We'll draw the lucky winner at the end of tonight's game. And then, guys, did you guys know that we're also sponsored by a candy company? I'm not what? even kidding. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Um, big shout out to Honey and Sage Candy Company. Uh, that's our friend Hooli's company, and they're killing it with lollipops and some really tasty uh, cotton candy and all kinds of interesting stuff. So uh, go check out their stuff. There's, they've got a special you can buy three, get one free if you use the code SAG3. SAG3. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, and then Is Hooli thing... to Honey or to Sage? <sighs> that's up for debate. Mm. Depends on the day, maybe. Um, we've already mentioned the Discord channel. That's the best way to um, get to know the folks on the screen and also the people behind the scenes. We've got a bunch of great folks that are contributing to production, including Andy, Ashley, Bleak, and Miko. Plus, we've got some great folks that are moderating, like Techie Woman's Ghost, Old Goat, and just a lot of fun people who talk about nerdy stuff and post a lot of um, GIFs and memes and, I don't know, just have a generally good time. So if you want to get in on some of that, and maybe, just maybe... Join us for a game. We've actually got a couple of casting calls out in our Discord. If you want to check those out, hop on over and say hi. Get to know us, and uh, we'll get you in a game. Uh, what else? We've got a Twitter that you can jump over and uh, connect with us on. But the most important thing that I want to do right now is quickly do some shout-outs for people who have been helping us out and uh, making our games more and more special. I'm talking about the folks uh, over at um, Trixie Wizard, who did our logo. Um, our Here's a Greyhawk logo, which is freaking fantastic. I'm super excited to uh, inform everybody. I think I've told you guys this maybe once or twice before live, but we've got some character art coming from uh, our friend Jose Ortiz, who's going to be giving us some, uh, or he's making some custom character art for all of our characters. So I'm really excited to see that. I've seen some little glimpses of Xanthi's art, and Ashley, you are going to you're going to do backflips when you see this. It's really awesome. I can't uh, wait. It's so good. Big shout out to Anna B. Meyer and uh, her awesome cartoon photography work uh building all the greyhawk maps that you can find online at that link and they're just super inspiring if you like maps you got to go check that out um and uh gosh the only other person that i want to make sure that we mention is are the folks over at Greycast, wiley hobbit and mateo who create a really fun uh, podcast that's been really helpful for me getting to know greyhawk better so thanks for all of that everybody we really appreciate it one last thing as i'm going to turn it over to bleak bleak's going to give us a quick update on what we've got coming in 2023 take it away bleak games yeah. We got games, we got all sorts of games. We got fantasy games, we got science fiction games, we got short games, we got long games, we got easy games, we got our games, we got games that are yet to be played. But mostly, we have a pretty full slate again coming into 2023. We have some of our old standbys. Good old Monday Night Madness returns in full swing with a couple of uh, really cool uh, new GMs coming in, stepping up, doing some stuff. And then uh, Miko, the OK's GM, bringing some of his Estera world, Estera world, I'll pronounce it correctly so that he doesn't sue me. Um, and to that thing, we have the continuation of Heroes of Greyhawk on Tuesdays, uh, a few more weeks of the awesome New Varden by uh, a Mr. Ty. Uh, what do we else? We got Shade Song that's going to start up again on Thursdays, a whole new concept, a game that takes place 10 years later uh, with a great group of players. And finally, Sundays, we're going to start off our Sunday uh, afternoon or late or early evening games with a vase and five shot that I'm going to run. And we're going to follow that up possibly with some horror uh, from uh, 
maestro dave over there so we got tons 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 of stuff more planned a lot in the pipeline it's good if busy time to be us yep we've got two by. active um casting calls i believe right now we've got one for the five part mothership game that i'll be running uh in february march and then we've got a Monday Night Mayhem that's coming up uh, in January. It's a two-shot that we're looking for players for. So, yeah, come on over and uh, get involved with us. We'd love to see you. Okay. Come in. The gravy's fine. I can't imagine that we missed anything. And if we did, we're going to have to come back to because I just want to get into this game, you guys. There's so much to do here. Um, I'd like yeah, to begin go. by uh, getting into a bit of a recap, shall we say, of what happened during last week's session. So, my friends, in the last session, our ragtag party of adventurers found themselves and the village of Hamlet besieged by a horde of snarly gnolls that swooped in to attack under the cover of darkness. Pulled up at the end of the welcome wench, the party snapped into action, securing the structure's defenses while Osler Gundagut revealed a secret door that led to an underground armory from which he procured shields and swords for his unarmed patrons. Bracing for the attack, a handful of gnolls bypassed your defenses, entering through the second level and pushing their way through the battered door. A fantastic bar fight, classic bar fight, erupted with Lachlan being knocked unconscious at one point as he defended against the gnolls. Attack, Norb, Xanthi, and Desmond finally putting the intruders down for the moment. You hatched a plot to secure the inn and make a break for Kenter Nevitt's estate where Elmo had, been, had seen the local militia battling against strong gnoll assault. Hoping to unite the militia and possibly Burns Badgers to the east, the party set out into the darkness, bypassing Knoll patrols with subterfuge and luck before arriving at, at uh, Kenter Nevitt's gate to see the local militia, militia making their stand against a throng of ravenous Knolls. In the streets, town folks struggled to reach the protection of the Nevitt's compound while the Knolls flooded in to cut them off. Without hesitation, our heroes... I like the sound of that. Our heroes sprang into action, attacking the gnolls and the hyenas and clearing a safe route for the townsfolk. And while more of the Hamlet militia fell in the battle, the townsfolk were saved. Within the compound, the party found Nevitz, seriously wounded, dying. Xanthi reached forward, reflexively casting a healing magic as he rose to his feet. Unsteadily, but alive. With the fate of Hamlet now at stake, Nevitz heeded your counsel. You suggested some options. Setting out from the compound with the host of fighters to clear the streets, link up with Burns Badgers to the east. There's a counterproposal made to return to the inn, gather the survivors to the west, and seek out others perhaps that needed your help, gathering them up and bringing them back to the Nevitz compound while militia members and badgers made their stand against the incursion. And yet a third option was proffered an attempt, the classic attempt, that which should never be done. A proposal to split the party. And that, my friends, is where we pick up tonight. <clears throat> the four of you stand before Kenter Nevitz. The proposals that you've laid out in front of him as he contemplates behind you, archers and pikemen defend the gates against gnolls that continue to attack. There are still gnolls in the streets. There are still people screaming in the distance, fires rising up at various locations. My friends, what do you do? I take a knee and try to catch my breath. Having just died a few minutes ago and having been brought back by the grace of Xanthi's magic, I'm like, ah. Oh, well, that takes the wind out of you. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah, how's everybody doing? Well, I am fine. Yeah, I'm, I feel great. I'm okay too. Norb, you all right? I'm I'm awesome. I'm a little I'm a little You're tired. Seriously wounded. Oh, stiff. Um, yeah, I'm tired too. No, I feel Lachlan pretty good. Doesn't look so good. All right, I'll be okay. All right, I stand up, painfully uh, bleeding. All right, um, all right, we gotta do something. We can't stay here all night just grab ass and we gotta get out there and try to help some folks Nevitz looks at you oh. he still got maybe got his hand on Xanthi's shoulder kind of steadying him what do you intend to do then well I think we're gonna send two people over to get birds badgers and the other two are gonna run to the inn 
I don't think we're going to split up. I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's the only idea. It's the only thing we can do in this Why? situation. Well, what is it going to bring us? We'll move faster. And get picked off faster. That's Why would we get picked off? We'll, we'll get picked off if we have to stop and fight. We, I was look at it you this look way. like you can barely stand. You need to run. You need yeah, to run so and get help. Whoever goes with me is basically on their own. So it's probably best if we stick to at least some little numbers. Uh, I think we should go and try to hook up with the Badgers and get some more soldiers running with us, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning the other direction. I think if we go help the Badgers, men capable of fighting, instead of helping the people who can't fight, we, we just... We just go help a bunch of guys who finish the fight before we get there, and then we make it to the people who need our help and they're all just dead already. I yeah, think we if... should help these people that are trying to flee because they're just getting slaughtered in the streets. People are dying out there. The longer we wait, the more die. I mean, if we could get a message uh, to, uh, you know, to the badgers, that would be wonderful. But, you know, like all the town is the way that we are. I don't know where they are. Like, what would they be doing on the far side of town? All right, well, I guess we can start. We start trying to help the people that are closest to here and then slowly expand out our search radius, I guess. We don't want to stray too far at first. This is the only safe place we got. But I think you're right. We got to. We got to help some of these folks out. All right. And if you're close, we can drag your corpse back to Nevitz. That warms my heart in a way that I can't quite articulate right now. Thank you, Xanthi. You're welcome. I right. thought give you a deal my on friends, a plot. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a secret uh, entrance on the back of the estate wall. You can come through there. I have men stationed there to keep an eye for you. You can bring, right. bring people back through there. And then he looks over and you watch as uh, the stable boy, who you remember from when you first came to meet with Nevitz days ago, uh, by the name of Kai, comes running up. He says, thank you. Oh, thank you, Kai. And he, uh, Kai has this small case, a wooden case that he opens up and Nevitz reaches in and he pulls out two potions and he hands them, he holds them out and he says, these healing potions will, will help you last a little longer and perhaps, perhaps save a, f a few more people. Thanks, old man. Yeah, these will come in very Sweet, yeah. Very I handy. can hold one of those. Maybe Lachlan should take one now. I think so. Uh, let's not waste them just yet. Waste them? One hit you're, and you're down. You're dead on your feet. You'll be no good if you're dead. Lachlan, close your eyes. Well, we should split them up. No, I've fallen for that once before, not again. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll take one. <sighs> Uncork it. We so carry one the of them, one. there are two of them. One of them is a uh, a regular healing potion. One of them is a greater healing potion. So there's a 2d4 plus 2 healing potion and a 4d4 plus 4 healing potion. Give him the... Uh... Probably the bigger one. Yeah. I would say the bigger one. All right, I got convinced. <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue. I'm going to take whatever to give me. Why don't each of you roll a d4 since there's four of you? Okay. So it can be yeah. all of our faults. That's, That's right. right. Three. <laughs> Two. <laughs> That's seven. One. Eight plus two is 12. No, plus four is yeah. 12. Not That's not bad. You take feel uh, instantly <laughs> better. <laughs> Oh, I hit the spot. <sighs> Doesn't change the fact that we're in a tight spot now, but... <laughs> we're still in a tight spot now. Still in a tight spot. He, he holds out the other potion who takes it. I mean, you could you could conceivably, as Scottish Jeff would suggest, take both. But there's another potion available if you want it. No, it's all right. Let's, um... Xanthi, you have spells left, so you take it so that, you know, if you're getting... Okay. Down. I'll take it. <laughs> Um, so 
what which one do I have? I have the It's uh just a common healing potion, so it's 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It's common. Jeff. You don't need to speak orcish or elfish or anything. It's in common. The instructions are anyways. Did, did we ever use that oh, one we yeah. found? Yes. Yes. We did. Okay. Pretty yeah. much instant. In the bar fight. Okay. Yeah, during the bar fight you gave it to. Him. Oh, all right. That's right. Lachlan's got so much healing potion liquid in his Lachlan stomach died. right now. It's just swash sloshing around inside of his little dwarven belly. Uh, I think I'm going to burp. <laughs> oh, going to give him the no. runs later. It smells like elderberries. Mm. All right. So, all right. Now what where are we going to go first? All right, let's take a look at the map. Well, we go out the back and try to find survivors, right? Oh, we don't need to go out the back. So, okay, yes, look. The... Sorry, I was going to say, let's just go out front and let's go check out, like, the smithy in those places. There's people just across the road, like... Well, now it's just told us the secret back way where there's no nulls. Yeah, he told us the secret back way to come in and bring people in. Oh. Yeah, there's a, um, uh, there's a spot right at this corner where you can bring people through a secret door and he's got a couple of men watching if you can see that mark on the Nevitz estate there little yeah. dot yep the little dot okay. Nevitz has a huge flag in his yard check that out mm -hmm. Compensating <laughs> he's very for patriotic something. well most of All the right. town is to the west and the south well, let's just, you know, like, go across the street and see if, like, there's anybody left in that house or... Yeah, let's start close, and then we'll expand later if we start at the other end, you know, like, we have a chance of saving <laughs> more people that way. We do know there's a bunch of people still at the inn, so we should make our way that way quickly. Uh, the inn is up the inn is up here, but they're okay for now, like, they're safer than people who are... Yeah, no, but are you talking oh, about All hanging houses? fruits. Yeah, I'm saying let's go down here first. All right, yeah. so you guys are going to basically kind of make your way out the front gate, essentially, past, like, the pikemen and the archers who are holding the gate. You kind of sneak like, past that, right? If it's... Is it possible to sneak out of the sure. front gate, or is there yeah, a bunch you can, of holes there? You, you can get past them, you know? You, you, okay. you come out, you might take a swing at one with your dagger or your sword and chop off a knoll's arm or something as you make your way out. But they they, they leave a, an opening for you, the, the guards do, to, to make sure that you can get back out into the street. Um, but there are gnolls that are sort of like converging and they're they're running through the streets, some of them not even paying attention to you as they race mm -hmm. after, um, you know, townsfolk that are looking for places to hide and that sort of thing. Um, you guys are going to kind of just tell me a little bit. Are you, are you just kind of walking down the street with eyes open trying to find folks? Are you trying to sneak? What's your movement uh, strategy here as you make your way west? Well, Desmond's definitely trying to sneak. Yeah. So I don't really sneak, uh, you know, <clears throat> disadvantage and all that. But I, th I would assume that we're like sticking to the sides of houses and shadows and trees and things like that. Like we're not brazenly like, you know, YOLOing down the middle of Main Street looking for trouble. Okay. That, that's my opinion. All right. Why don't you give me a group stealth check? Yeah. <clears throat> and Desmond, if you wanted to be like farther ahead of them, you would be your own stealth check. But if you guys are all in a group, it'll be a group stealth check. Oh, I'm we'll going to roll with now. advantage. Nice. I'm going to guidance myself. Thanks for the advantage. Uh, chat, just so you know, you can cheer 100 bits to grant a player of your choice or oh, no, your right. GM advantage. Great. Holy moly, yeah. All right, what did you get, Andy? Uh, 16. Ashley? 15. Uh, Norb? 3. Lachlan? 13. Okay, not bad. Um, you are making your way west. You're hiding along tree lines, along fence line, along hedgerows. Uh, Desmond, you're out, fr out in front of the group a little bit, I'm assuming, to sort of give yourself a little bit of a buffer about how far in front of the group are you working? Just like, you know, 20, 30 feet. Not too okay, far. so you're about 20 feet out or so, mm -hmm. and you hear a, you hear a struggle up ahead. Uh, a lot you can't quite see from where you are your position but you hear people struggling there's the clang of swords and and spear there are there's the snarling of of gnolls and there's some shouts of men i'm gonna do a bunch of hand signals <laughs> no um all right let's be heroes yeah 
I'm going to turn around. There, there's a fight up ahead. Oh. I think we can sneak in and flank them and help out the whoever. What are we looking at? How many people's? How many he knows? Uh, do I have an idea? Can I see the fight? or I just You can't. If you wanted to sneak ahead a little bit, um, you could probably get a better look. I'll have you roll another stealth check as you do that. That's up to you. But you, right now, you can't see it. You can only hear it. I'll give him guidance on that. All right, yeah, I'm going to sneak up and try to get a better look. I'll give you an extra D4. Extra oh, D4. Right. That's right. In the balance. Hey, big shout out to uh, Tabletop Audio, by the way. These tracks that we've been using these last two sessions have been absolutely fantastic. Like, they just, they get my <laughs> my anxiety just skyrocketing. Oh, my God. Hey, Insomnia. Hey, Insomnia. Yeah, Good to see you. Uh, God, not great. I rolled a natural one. Oh, um, yeah, that's, I think that's bad, my, right? With the D4, that's a four. And with my stealth bonus, that's a uh, 12. Wait, see, here's, here's the good news is you can't crit fail really on a, uh, on a skill check. So you're fine. What was the total? 12. I'm still going to do the crit fail emote from uh, Blue Box. <laughs> a 12. Okay. Yeah. You make your way up and you can see some figures in battle. There, there is a, a small, um, pile of dead gnolls on the ground but there are also some dead militia members on the ground you can see that there's a group of people clustered up against a fence line fighting off against these gnolls give me a d12 roll okay action time <clears throat> it's not the d12 here we go eight okay you know, that's when you should have rolled one, because if that's the number of no I know. Ones. All right, Although so you can see with with your with your keen eye, Desmond, that you recognize one of the townsfolk that is fighting off, and you can see this blast of arcane energy as your good old your good old pal Spug Noir is there <sighs> fighting off these gnolls, and he shoots out a fireball, and it ruptures across this gnoll's face, just singeing its head as it howls and starts running in circles, bumping into another knoll. Another knoll comes in and like takes a swing at Spug Noir and he just barely ducks out of the way as a spearman puts his spear up to block it. You can see that it doesn't look good for old Spug and the crew. Seeing him in a different light now though. I yeah. I, do I see him out there? Uh, you're not up there with Desmond yet. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna motion for the rest of them to come up and we'll, we'll surprise him. We'll try to surprise him. All, all right, right as I'll, you guys uh, as you guys all move up, I would like a stealth roll from the other three of you, please, to see if they notice you or not. Breaking out into song. I'm just gonna Natural have my crossbow, 20. crossbow out and ready. Nice, though. very nice. For a uh, twenty-two. Wow, Xanthi. Eleven. Hey. And bleak, uh, Lachlan, yeah, 11, I should say. 11, 11 also, actually. Okay. Um, you come clangering up. Uh, luckily, these gnolls are in full-fledged frenzy against this small group of civilians. And I'm going to bring up a map so you can kind of see what we are talking about here. Do you have a map ready? How did you know we were going to come here? You know, it's the magic of Dungeon here. Mastery. It's the magic of Dungeon Mastery. It's the magic of ASMR. All right. So first of all, you guys, have you guys ever seen old Spuggy? A no, picture of him? No. All right. So hold on. I got to I got to I got to oh bring goodness. Spug Noir up here. He's younger than I thought he was. Yeah, he's a young dude. There he okay. is. I'm going to bring him up all on right. screen here for everybody to see. There's Spug Noir. Uh. Good old Spug. He is a uh, aspiring mage. Good I kind of saw him as an old dude, too. Uh. Mm -hmm. Just goes mm -hmm. to show. Just yep. goes to show. On the mind's eye. There's a good old spug. Good old spug. All right, so here's what's happening, my friends. You come onto the scene, and you guys are, I would say, Desmond's kind of in the lead. Um, you're, you're along this wall over here. Right about there. Spug Noir is in combat. You look up the four of you, and you can see that there are um, gnolls that have that have climbed up on the roof and look as though they're ready to pounce down on this group of 
civil, uh, townsfolk that are down in the middle of this little courtyard between the two buildings. There, there, there are two guards left in Spug Noir, and they're fighting off these gnolls. Let's get everybody to roll a uh, initiative. And I need to grab my dice. Initiative. Well, I didn't know if we'd be rolling that. dice tonight, so I just decided I wouldn't grab them, but little do we know. Go ahead and grab your dice on Twitch. Grabbing my dice. All right. Very dice. Okay. All right, my friends. 25 to 20. Excuse me? Uh, 15 to 20. 15. Uh, 17. I think I got 15 too. 17 for Desmond. Norb. I did. 15 for Xanthi, then Norb. Uh, Lachlan, what'd you get? 13. Okay. I got me the 13. Day. And somebody, let's see. Norb, why don't you give me a roll for uh, the guards and oh, good old Spug Noir? Good old Spug Noir. Buggy. Mm hmm. Can we call him that? Can we call him Spug Noir? Spug Noir. Four. Stancy's still calling him Spud Noir. A four. <laughs> he really needs a, uh, a catchphrase that's like, you got Spug Noir. He needs a catchphrase too. Catchphrases are totally awesome. Santi right, has so... a catchphrase. Hello, everybody. Desmond, Hi, you Santi. are at the. These are my friends. You're at the top of the order. Just what would you like. like to do, Des? Uh, all right. Des is going to see this knoll in front of him, giving Spug, Spuggy, good old Spuggy, a hard time. And he's going to shoot the guy in his face. So, this knoll right here. Got it. Crossbow shot. Okay. Aye. Um. That's probably not very good. Um, can I use an advantage after I my after I rolled? No, okay. sir. So that's yep. a total of twelve to hit. Ooh, your bolt goes wide as you fire the shot. You have movement and a bonus action. All right, you're so on deck. Just hoping that um, no, that won't help him. I'm going to bonus. I'm just going to move. Sorry. It's okay. I'm going to move up here because I can also bonus action dash five feet. And I'm just going to kind of take cover behind this little bush. Okay. Just to give me a little cover. Yeah, and you can see as you as you start making your way through this landscape too that there's smoke. You can smell as if you recall when you came out of the the inn the first time after that first battle, you could smell the the, the odor of things burning. There's smoke hanging low in the on the air, so there's a little bit of pretty good cover over there. Um, are you gonna use your bonus action to hide? Uh, I use my bonus action to F for extra movement to get up. Got there. it. All right, Xanthi, you're up. All right, um, Xanthi will. Ooh. You know what? She's she's just gonna go for the the closest um, one. So I guess this guy um, next to Spud. So she's gonna go for it too. Um, I would like to roll with advantage, nice. uh, and I will firebolt him. All right, give it a roll. Hey, thanks for the cheer. One for Lachlan. Advantage for Lachlan. He, he's going to need it. <laughs> Thanks, right. Wandering. Thanks, Wandering. We appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. Well, I said man, but whoever you are, I appreciate you. What do you got, Xanthi? I rolled an 18 to hit. Yes, that definitely hits. Uh, for three fire damage. Three fire damage. Okay. And that's the one that's closest to you? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. Um, you, you take the shot and almost as if you mimicked what Spug Noir did with his firebolt, the fire just 
erupts across the back of the knoll's head as it kind of turns. <laughs> and then it just <laughs> drops to the ground as that's the one that uh, Spug had hit with his attack earlier uh, when you had come onto the scene. So that one drops to the ground in a heap of Teamwork. burning canid flesh. Uh, do you want to move or use a bonus work. action, Xanthi? Uh, yeah, I would like to actually, so are these flower boxes? What, yes. Are they yep. super yep. low? Yeah, they're they? kind of low, but there's a fence line too. The fence is probably waist height, if not like maybe for you, maybe a little bit higher than waist height. You okay. could jump over it. Um, sure. I'll jump over that and kind of try to take a little bit of cover um, mm -hmm. from the ones that are in the road. Okay, so kind of getting in between the fence and the house, basically. Yeah. Yep, makes sense. Huh. All right. Um, Norb. All right. Norb is going to action dash full speed um, while pulling his battle. Well, can he pull his battle axe and... Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can, pull, you can don a weapon as a free action. Yep. Yep. So pulling his battle axe and then dashing. Okay. Right so use your to action to get right in the mix. Yep. He's uh, uh, Norm. Thank God. Bug noir. Thank God. Uh, Got to be more careful. There's still a few of us alive. There's, there's a bunch more, of there's a bunch of gnolls around here. Um, that brings us to Lachlan. I am going to uh, run in. Give me one, two, three, four, five. Uh, with my action, I am going to uh, use uh, Sacred Flame. You mm. get to do a dex saving throw. Which one are you Sacred Flaming at? I am going to Sacred Flame. Um, one of the ones up there. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, no, I rolled a, I rolled a seven. You rolled a seven? Yep. Awesome. So you take 1d8 radiant damage. Radiant damage. It's a bolt of light. Shoots down from the sky and hits you. Five points of damage. Oh, hey, Scarpy. Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. 22 months. Thank you. Appreciate Maybe. your support. Thanks, Scarp. Um, how much damage total? Uh, five points, I think I said, yep. Yeah. Five points, so kind five of, damage. because all this stuff happens simultaneously, these gnolls are kind of like coming down the, the shingles, the, the clay tile rooftop, and you hit it with these, these flames that come out of the sky, um, and as you do, it like takes a trip and falls and lands on the ground, burning in flame as it dies on the ground in front of you. Um, dropping to the ground, actually in front of this guard who's just like, oh, oh, oh. Um, anything else from Lachlan? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, yell to the people who are here and like, back out of there, back out of there, come out, join us over here. You know, kind of trying to get these uh, folks that are there away from the other one that's coming down. So just kind of trying to get these people to filter down around here. Okay. Get your awesome. asses over here. It Don't is just their stand turn. there like chickens without a head. Get out of here. Ooh, they're like intimidated by you, but they're they're like, well, he's just yelling at us. We'll go to him. So they're actually going to move back. They're going to fall back towards you. Thank God. They almost had us. Uh, they come back. Spug Noir turns, uh, looking at Norm. He's like, I'm glad you made it. Just in time for the fun. And he turns as this other Knoll comes in, and he's going to firebolt the Knoll. Uh, I rolled an 18 on the die. That's definitely going to hit. Um, Lachlan, give me a D10 roll for me, please. Yes, sir. Seven. Seven. Yes. Um, a seven is enough to blast this other knoll. So these knolls have been fighting. They've taken some damage. This knoll drops to the ground. Um, and this guard is going to move. Actually, this guard's going to move up a little bit and take a dodge or like a ready action. There we go. And this guard is going to move up as well and take a ready action as they anticipate more knolls racing in now. Just for um, for the sake of visual, because I know that some of you appreciate this kind of thing. There are gnolls all over the place out here attacking. You can see them running through the fog. There are people being attacked in different areas now. 
that's for flavor because I want this to feel big and like there's a lot of action going on around you. Um, but there is, there's a group of gnolls that run past in our, almost a pack as they're chasing somebody down and they, and they run past this, this battle. Um, that brings us to the gnolls. This gnoll is going to jump off (laughs) and move up to Spug Noir and take a swing at Spug with a flail. Don't touch uh, me, Spug. That is going to hit Spug Noir. Uh, yeah, big time. Spug Noir takes two damage. Spug, really? Uh oh. Spug takes two damage, and uh, Norb, you see, he kind of like he kind of buckles a little bit. <gasps> as he takes a flail in the back that he wasn't expecting. This knoll is going to race up and attack one of the guards and misses the guard with a five. Um, and that brings us back to the top of the order, Desmond. All right. Um, Des will see Spug getting attacked and he will try to shoot this knoll down here. Um... I'm going to use one of my advantages. Thanks, chat. Which I chat? Did. I know what chat is, but he keeps giving us a lot of advantages. I like chat. Chat. Uh, chat. That's, a tw- that's a 23 to hit. 23 definitely hits. Which mm-hmm. Remind me which one you're shooting at, the one by the guards? The one south of Spug. All right. Um. Yeah, you got a shot at him. All right, that's a total of not great. Um, nine piercing. Nine piercing? Yeah, mm-hmm. you hone in, you aim, squeeze the trigger, your cross, it hits it right in the neck, and blood just kind of splatters all over Spug, Spug Noir, who's just kind of like oh, holding, holding his back, and he just gets splattered with blood. Um, and this... Noel goes down as well. Uh, that brings us to... Or, Des, do you want to move or use a bonus action? Yeah, I'm going to mo- use my movement and move back down towards everybody else. Bonus action and dash over to the other side of this fence here. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Xanthi. All right. Um, Xanthi will pop up from behind um, this planter <laughs> and move um, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 over the side of that fence. Um, and she's going to try to hit, oh, I'm so used to the other VTT, uh, this lone knoll over there. Okay. With a fire bolt. All right. And I will Let do him have advantage it. again because I like hitting. 24 to hit. Yes, that hits. And come on. Eight fire damage. Eight fire damage? Nice. You, uh, you blast this one, and again, it just fire erupts. It howls out, getting the attention of some of these other gnolls that are running around in the periphery. You see some hyenas that are starting to, like, <sighs> they're kind of just at the edge looking at you and, like, getting re- It looks like they're getting ready to attack from just to the north of your position, Lachlan. But this one, indeed, is also killed. And for the moment, um, you, you have an opportunity here that I would give you an, a, a decision point. You could sneak, try to sneak back through to the south between these two houses and try to make an escape from this situation, which you can see could turn really badly right now. You could try to take these guys on, head, head on. Um, some of them have noticed you. Maybe not all of them, but some of them may have noticed you. Certainly these hyenas up in this corner here have noticed you because they came in kind of sniffing around where Desmond was. We should, we should get these people to safety. Yeah, we need to get them out of here. Yep. Yeah. Now. Let's run south, and then a couple of us can stay behind on, around the corner and just ambush whoever comes after us. Yes, this way, quickly. So you Come guys on, run folks. Head Follow south. Me. 
uh, Spug Noir kind of reaches up and puts his arm around Norb. He puts his arm around your shoulders as best he can. You're you're a lot bigger than he is, of course, uh, but he's pretty tall. So he gets his arm kind of up around you, and he's he looks pretty badly injured, not mortally wounded, but he he looks he looks pretty beat up. Um, Will you resist me putting him in a fireman carry? No. He yeah, I'm picking it. him up. He would love it. Yeah, I'm picking him up. He's all, he's I'm still throwing him over my shoulder like a sack of potatoes. You throw him over your shoulder and he up. kind of puts his arm like around your neck as he holds on. He goes, my hero. <laughs> and then and, careless uh, whispers by wham starts to play in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys um, give me a. Let's tell me tell me what skills you guys would like to use as you try to essentially like escape this confluence of bad guys. You're gonna ditch to the south. How are you gonna do it? Let's start with um, let's start with Lachlan. Bells, bells, Margaret. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to uh, use my uh, athletics uh, to be able to uh, you know move quickly and get these people running ahead of me and help them out and kind of try to run around the corner there and so that uh, they can start escaping but i will certainly once we kind of get down there uh kind of hold back and let make sure everybody else runs past me but uh, okay. i might need to you know go cardio a little bit here so i'm gonna use my athletic to you know get my short legs a pumping give me a athletics roll please awesome how about you xanthi what are you gonna do Oh man, uh, my best things are like intimidation, <laughs> and persuasion, and deception. Um, well, these are dogs. Sit. <laughs> um, uh, ooh, um, how about you know? Yeah, I'm food? gonna, I'm gonna bluff and and um, go. Oh look. There's the army! It's Burns Badgers coming to save us! <laughs> All right. Look over there. Like, yeah, look over there, guys. Hopefully they a, speak common. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Meanwhile, my other hand, I'm like, come on, come on. What did you roll, Lachlan, um, for your athletics? Uh, I got 18. <clears throat> okay, nice. Yeah, you're able to, like, kind of herd, you're, like, uh, herd-dogging these people, like, kind of getting them together, moving them to the south between the houses, and kind of, like, pacing back and forth, getting ready to attack if need be. Xanthi, what'd you roll for your persuasion? I'm gonna use advantage, because why not? I, well, I would... Natural 20. Ooh. For okay. a 27. All right. Um, okay. Um, you, you don't really get the feeling like these hyenas and gnolls bought it. They're, they're just like, they're just ravenous with hunger. Um, they, uh, they maybe, maybe it caused them to hesitate momentarily, but they're, uh, they're smart and they're ready to kill. So it, they maybe, it maybe buys you a little bit of time. We'll say. Anyone um, have food in their bag? Norb, what about you, buddy? Um, I don't know if it's allowed. I have minor illusion. I was thinking of casting a spell to have uh, somebody running north into the trees. Or does it need to be a skill? Um, I'm going to make you roll a skill check either way. Okay. So My deception didn't work at all, and I almost got a 30, just so you know. <laughs> I'm hoping... I'm hoping with the, the influence of the spell to give them something to look at. We'll give them something to chase. Okay. Uh, you can definitely try it. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, cast minor illusion and have a separate person running north into the trees. Okay. So give Oops. me a yeah persuasion check, I would say. Six. Yeah, you, you also don't see any response really from them. Um, Desmond. Great. Um, I'm going to use my skills in stealth to try to find areas of cover and shadow that we can all run through to try to lose these guys. All right. Give us a stealth so roll. Kind of trying to scout ahead to find a good path. I like it. Um, 
I'm going to use my advantage because I feel like this is a big deal. It kind of is. <laughs> yep. You have three townsfolk and Spug Noir now in your, and two guards. Okay, that's a total of 21. That's pretty damn good. So with the combination of roles, some of them working, some of them not working as well, um, you guys are able to dip through between the houses, find a path as Desmond kind of like guides you along into the shadows over some, um, I'm kind of thinking almost of like the Shaun of the Dead scene where they're jumping over the, um, the fences, the fences yeah. to get from yard <laughs> to yard, you know, you're like going from yard to yard, you're, you're blasting through, getting in, you're, you're hiding for a moment, your heart's just pounding at one point, uh, because it was like a 50, 50 win on the, on the group check at one point, uh, hyena has come out of the darkness and jumped jump and attack the two guards and the guards like fend them off. And as you guys are like making your way, they're kind of t at the tail end and one of them falls and the other one's like trying to help them up to get them back up. And the other one gets attacked as well. But Desmond, you, you come in and pop them with your, with your crossbow and take them out. Eventually you guys make your way um, West farther. Now, where are you guys headed at this point? As you escape this immediate confrontation with just one guard being, or actually both guards were lost. But you still have the three the three townsfolk and Spug Noir with you. I'll try to get back to Nevitz, I guess. Yeah, we should try to get them back to behind those walls. Yeah, um, that's our goal to get them to safety. Yeah. We're going okay. to go around the back. Around the back. So maybe do we have to double back to go back north, Dave? Yeah, you'd have to come you'd have to go back across the street again, across right. the roadway, and then back through the trees. Once you get across the the road, um, that's going to be the hardest part. So if you have, if you want to make some stealth rolls or you want to describe maybe some tactics that you use, you might, you is might there, be able to is, do. So are we, I'm, I'm sorry, because I don't see the big map anymore. Just that mm, one. Let we me bring the map back for you. Sort of on the side of the. You guys mm. are currently like over, I would say somewhere like over here. It's not exact. Like the, the buildings and stuff aren't exactly the same, but you're somewhere like over on this side of the, of the road at this point. All right, well, what if maybe we continue we can, going towards the inn? Yeah, maybe we, we can, can create a distraction um, so that, like, they all look one way or run that way. Like, I don't know, like, we throw some fireballs over the air or, like, something big. Uh, maybe oh, light something on fire and then they go to investigate it and then we run across the street. <laughs> I can, I can make noise like 30 feet away, but I don't know, is that far enough? I mean, maybe if you just do it in the bushes, so like they run over there and that'll give us a head start. Norb, your illusions, can they be uh, olfactory? Olfactory? Like smell? Oh, um, I, yeah. I, I can make things smell. Because if you made like, like the smell of like blood and fresh meat, emanating from a house or something on the other side like fairly big like it that might attract them that's not a bad idea we could we could do that we could also you were mentioning the hotel we could we could head we could head over to the inn yeah that's what i'm thinking and if then, we cut and down fortify and go to the that and, and at least get these people to safety and reinforce the people who are there maybe grab them and take the route we took last time back yeah, because that'll take us around the back to Nevitz, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. So if we if we look at the map, if we look at if you you know if we say, if we're thinking they're like in this area, right? And we come down here, but you do like that smell coming from up here, you know, or meat roasting or something, you know, or blood and stuff like that. And then while they're kind of focused there, we'll just cut across down here. I like it. Does it? I mean, Can you does smell it what I'm cooking? Yeah. Can you smell this? As you guys does are it... having this conversation, Spugnamar uh, kind of like tightens his grip around your neck, um, Norb, as he's still like, sort of like you're kind of carrying him, you know? He's got his arm around you and he's like, oh my God, look at, look at the grove. And you look to the south and you can see that there's this massive fire burning in the grove. 
Um, not only that, there's fires burning in the town square where there was an old tree, uh, a beautiful big oak tree in the town square right in front of the inn. Um, there's a fire burning at some of the buildings near the smithy shop. Um, but the biggest fire that you can see at the moment is to the grove. And then all of a sudden you hear this massive explosion. And it just kind of reverberates. And you look back to the east, past Nevitt's Manor probably back to like where the watchtower is, where Burns Badger's watchtower is. And there's this massive plume of fire that just <laughs> erupts into the air. But yeah, to the south, the grove is burning. Um, oh my God. Wouldn't it be better to take these survivors back to Nevitz's instead of bringing them further into battle? I agree. But I don't know um, if we should drag them all the way over to the inn. You do remember that there was a large throng of gnolls that were sort of converging on Nevitz's because that was where the that was where the main combat that you've seen was taking place. A lot of those gnolls that were moving through the streets, okay. the hyenas were kind of moving in that direction. But you could so, go back that way. You just need to make some stealth rolls and roll really yeah, high. Or, or if we want to go back that yeah. way, we'd have to kind of go around this way maybe and cut back. That that might be not bad if we go around the back of these two houses and then um come up to the right-hand side of Nevitz's manor. What are you guys going to do? Like, so if we cut uh, like this, yeah, through here, and then... And come around back. Sounds like you're honing I mean, in on a, a return to Nevitz's place. You can always yeah. sit back out and go back to the inn, but you do have these right. people. You've got people that you've saved, so to speak. Um, it's a matter of what do you do with them. Spug Noir is injured. The other three seem to be okay, but really scared. All right. Uh, screw hand. it. Let's get back to Nevitz. That was the original plan. Yeah. Let's not change the plan. Let's do that. And then we okay. can worry about something else after. All right. Give me a group stealth roll. I'm going to use an advantage so I don't, my disadvantage doesn't screw us over. Thanks, chat. Thank you, chat. Yeah. I'm just going through mine. <laughs> Thanks, chat, for all the advantages. <laughs> um, dirty 20. Nice. All right. Four. Norb. Des? Uh, that's 12. 12, and what did you say, Lachlan? Same as uh, Des, 12. 12, 12, okay. You guys are able to, uh, to make it back to the gates. There are some hyenas that are kind of trailing behind you, uh, but they don't seem to want to get super close to you it's more like they're kind of watching you and sort of following you through the through the trees and behind these houses as you make your way over the hedge through that hedgerow uh off to the side here right here um you you, lo you lose sight of them they kind of maybe stop at the hedgerow or you're not sure where they go but as you make your way through the hedgerow and turn and kind of start heading north you get to the road and with those rolls you're able to, to race across the road with these townsfolk in tow norb still carrying spug noir who's just kind of like holding on tight for dear life and you make it back to the gate and uh you see that there are some guards up on the on the wall of of the nevitz estate of the compound and they see you coming and then one of them opens you can see the door on the side of the stone wall just <laughs> opens up and he's like in bring them in and then the, the decision you have to make is, are you going in too, or are you just handing off these people and then heading back out? I'd say hand out. Hand yeah, hand them off and get, get back, back out. out. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I kind of want to go back down this way. Oops. I kind of want to go back down this way and go check on the grove. Uh, see if, you know, the fertilizer. Oh, wow. I was there. thinking the opposite direction we're on opposite wavelengths right now because i see all these houses to the west oh you're muted kirk oh um like i see all the house those two houses straight west of nevitz manor then there's the bridge and all the houses over there and then we get down to the inn too yeah i see what you're saying i keep thinking that we want to get some sort of reinforcements if we can because we're eventually going to run out of luck which is what we're running on right now uh, but I mean, you know, if you're feeling that strongly about it, I mean, oh, I, I, I have trouble arguing with the getting a druid argument. So if he's still around and if he leave his trees, even as they're burning, 
Yeah, it's a, it's a big question mark on what's going on to the south. You did hear that massive explosion over to the east. Um, and as you kind of look over there, you can see that there is quite a fire um, burning over at the the tower area. Yeah, but there's, there's nothing well. else around there that can burn. No, like, exactly. So I'm not I'm just kind of setting the that. stage. There's like these big yeah. fires burning, but the grove is like the biggest of the fires. It is a massive fire. And yeah, um, I'm afraid that this is going to kind of burn out into these things. See what I'm saying? Well, we're not firefighters. We don't have that ability. No, but maybe the druid can summon rain. Well, if he could, wouldn't he be doing it? Not if he's fighting off a bunch of gnolls. All right, so there's no reason why you can't do multiple things, but maybe you just think about it in a sequence. So if you want to, if you wanted to check on the inn, you could do that and then visit the uh, grove after possibly. Um, they might know what's happening at the grove possibly, or you could go to the grove not knowing what's happening there, but hopefully lending some sort of hand potentially to whatever is happening there. Can I ask you something, Dave? Absolutely. I would like, I don't know if there's a role I can make or if there's anything, but I would like to try and get a sense where the gnolls came from. Because when I look at the map and where the fires are, I get the feeling the gnolls came at us from the east and south area, which would leave me to believe that they might not even be in the north and northwest areas yet. Oh, we right? saw They're them. moving towards there. So, and because they were east of us. That's where we messed with them at the farm. And so if they came at us, they'd be coming in from the east and it looks like maybe the south. And if they haven't even crossed into the north yet, um, that's why I'm like, there's no fires, there's nothing going on there. So they might just be on this side or they might not even get around to making it across the river kind of thing. When we went behind the inn and yeah, went we through the here. back areas, there was a huge swarm of gnolls. Yeah, but where was it? I had the, I, that's north I had the of the inn. I had, yeah, but I had the impression they were here because we had to use that fog to cross the so river good. and all that. Yeah, we we, we know they the were here that were around, around the here. Too, I'm so happy right the now. Was attacked. <laughs> Thank you guys. They're everywhere. They're all and over everywhere. The place. There's a fire. Yeah. It's definitely bad. They're attacked. over here. They're yeah. over yeah. here. So they're, they're over here. everywhere. They're okay. They're so here. if we work on the concept that they're everywhere, then it doesn't really matter where the fuck we're going. There's going to be gnolls well, there. So let's pick the place that, you know, we're going to be able to prevent the most why don't, why don't we go to the inn to try to help people i think jeru would want us to do that uh, because i think those people are probably the safest of all these people because we set them up already That's like we're true. just going we're doubling back to check something that we already have agreed was okay because we left originally so my feeling is either we go down to the grove to try and see if there's anything we do there or we'll go back up north and start ranging out into these areas and see if there's people around here that need help so it's one of those two so either we go and see if we can do anything about the fire or we go here and see if there's anything we can do for these people if they're in in, in distress all i can do is make more fire yeah that's 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 not gonna help. well it will if we're facing the rules all right so, so uh there's two proposals on the board uh everybody gets a vote uh norb gets two votes uh, so two votes? I don't know, so that we can have an we can have an odd number. All right, there's one vote to go to the Grove, so you'd you'd be heading basically south, um, moving this way, getting probably down this way and getting into the Grove somewhere like this. Yeah, checking um, basically checking this area. Out. Yep. The other option is to go kind of up this way, maybe kind of check in here, possibly go to the end of the Welcome Wench and just check in to see if anybody needs to get out of there. You don't know. I mean, you did leave them it's in a secured position, but there's a lot of shit going down and it's been, I would say in, in like real world time, it's probably been like 45 minutes since you were there. Maybe an hour at most. Good night, Miko. Have a good night, buddy. Later, man. All right. So option one, option two, everybody who's voting for option one, raise your hand. Everybody is voting for option two. Raise your hand. <laughs> All right, uh, so you, you guys are going to go to the same thing. Same thing. You guys are going to go to the end of the welcome wench. Go west. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't still respond to the grove. It'll just take. It'll just be in sequence. So, go west, right. young man. Go west. Go west. Go west. 
All right, so you guys head west. And as you do, you in something interesting happens. As you get to the road, um, as you make your way through here, you're, you're hiding, you've, you see some knolls. Now you see knolls like kind of running to the south down the street as you're along the fence line watching. And you can see that there are militiamen coming down the road from the river bridge. And they have shields and they have uh, spears and they are banging their spears against their shields and making a lot of noise and they are pushing you can see it's a front that is pushing the knolls to the south from the river it looks as though perhaps there was some mobilization along the river um you pro you haven't really spent a whole lot of time in that part of town but you do see um if you look about to try to make out people, you can see that Sister Calmer is there and she's got a, a she's got a mace in her hand and she's kind of like leading the charge as they're coming south. And um, and uh, Canon Tyrone is with them. So there's there's an element of the Cuthbertines that are pushing. Oh, sweet. <laughs> there's we have a new um, <laughs> we have a new alert. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i just set that up hey thanks scarpy advantage across the board much appreciated thanks. uh i just set that up last week um all right so you guys make your way to the street and you you see them coming down the the road and they're banging their shields and making a bunch of noise and you can you can see it's like the cuthbertine front that's coming and they're pushing back the knolls what do you do all right, um, I say we wait for the bulk of the gnolls to run by and then be on our way to the inn. Or do we okay. team up with these Cuthbertines? You watch know. as well, the Cuthbertines kind of push them. past and they move past and some of the guards like look over at you and say, join us! And they just keep they just keep marching down the road. Sister okay. Calamaria doesn't even notice you guys. She's just, you can see she's just so fired up. Her, her mace is bloodied like she's just been beating knoll heads. Might as well I'll, join the train uh, to the inn. Yeah, we'll, we'll run up, and while we're up there, I'll I'll try to grab someone who kind of maybe looks like, not maybe the sister, but someone who's like near the front, and I'll be like, uh, there's people uh, holding out at Nevitz. They got some soldiers there, and uh, they're keeping some people safe in there. Might be good to uh, head out there and sort of use that as a base to uh, spread out further into the village, into the town. I will push them to the south and then to the east. It will be done with these gnolls before the night's through. And then you know will <laughs> keep up, uh, pipe up, and she'll say, and there's people in the inn still. They kind of nod at you as, they're, as they keep marching. Um, do you, do you kind of like sneak past them and kind of go through to the inn, or do you kind of join up with them as they make? They're making their way down towards the inn either way. They're kind of going yeah, we'll down this road. Down right yeah. Yeah. They're going yeah. down towards the inn, yeah. Safety in numbers, yeah. I see. Oh, and now I you want safety in numbers, huh? <laughs> When was that an option before? That was the first option I laid out. <laughs> that was a hypothetical joining of people. That nevertheless, they you, nevertheless, you guys are still alive, and you're making, and you've linked up with this, this, uh, this group, this small uh, unit of militia members as they are pushing through. You can see knolls are running in front of them, kind of like taking off. People are throwing spears and taking knolls down as you finally get to the end of the welcome wench. And you can see that at the inn, Osler, hey, thanks for the raid, Blue Box. Appreciate you guys hey, jumping hey. in. Here. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Always a pleasure to see you guys. Uh, if you're not following Blue Box RPG, what the heck are you doing? Get in on the action. Big shout out to you guys. Much appreciated. Um, we are just kind of figuring out what the heck is going on with this invasion of Hamlet by Knowles. And you, you guys make your way, as I was saying, back to the end of the Welcome Wench. And you can see Osler up, like, on the front porch or, like, the front steps. And he has got a, a sword, and he's swinging it, and he's fighting off gnolls. As the front, the squad of militia members come through. They're pushing the gnolls to the south. And it looks as though the end of the Welcome Wench has sort of turned the, turned their tide as well, as the, the members that you had left there with their weapons and their armaments are now out in the street fighting. There are some of them that are trying to put the fight out that are burning in the in the main square as you can see like the main tree in front of the inn of the welcome wench is burning um and they're they've got a small like almost a fire brigade kind of getting after this um 
this blazing fire. And I should probably take a breath here and just say, uh, if you guys are interested, those of you who just joined us, we do have a giveaway tonight. CZRPG has donated an awesome, great library PDF digital content for your Dungeons and Dragons adventures. So exclamation mark trying to get in on the action. Um, now someone yells out, the grove, the grove is burning. And you look to the south now, you can see this big plume of smoke rising as the trees are giving off all of this smoke from the burning. And you can you can see that some of the some of the people as they continue pushing south, others are getting uh, going to the well and grabbing buckets, and they're starting to bring buckets of water south to the grove. Um, and they one of them looks over at you, Desmond, and kind of like throws an empty bucket to you, just kind of tosses it to you, and you you grab yeah, you, I'll jump. you catch I'll it. I'll jump in. Yeah, yep. I'll jump in. All right, should we head to the grove? Yeah, what do you guys want to do? Uh, I'm assuming that the north has been cleared by these guys, so yeah, let's uh, head further yeah. down into it and check out uh, what's going on there, if we can help there. Bring it on to the Grove. Okay. China Grove. So you guys are going to head to the Grove, and you can just see that it's blazing with fire. Um, there are a variety of people that are are working the flames, carrying buckets of water. Uh, one of them comes racing back with empty bucket. <laughs> Something's wrong with Drew. He's nowhere to be found. And he kind of runs past as you guys are making your way south towards the grove itself. And it's just smoke. As you enter the trees, the smoke is hanging low and it, it assaults your lungs. It burns. You cough as you're, as you're trying not to breathe it, maybe wrapping some fabric around your face to keep the smoke out of your lungs as you, as you do this. And you can see that there's this, this sort of youngish looking, uh, halfling who seems to be sort of in charge and he's sort of like barking orders and like he's he's directing traffic of these of this like small brigade of firefighters if you will who are trying to to battle the grove and he, he says i don't know what it is the fires just keep springing up inside the grove it's the probably all the the fertilizer it's got to be something burns excess gas uh you can see this guy's got this red overcoat on. It's got like this this homlet uh, um, coat of arms on it, um, and he's just shouting, he's sweating profusely as he's calling out orders to people. Have you seen Jeru? There's no way to be seen. <laughs> We've got to get in there. He, he might be in his home. He, he might be injured. The, the, the flames are too thick. I really don't have anything I can do about the flames, unfortunately. Well, I'm going to suggest Norb dig a fire line with his uh, oh, old yeah. earth capabilities. It's good. Try yep. to keep it from spreading. Yep. Heck of an idea. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Do a trench here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys enter into the grove. And there are fires you can see kind of like springing up. You see his uh, his hut in the uh, in the middle of the grove as you're making your way into it. And as you look upon it, give me a quick. Um, we're gonna come back to that Norb with your uh, with your fire line, but give me a quick perception check, everybody. Perception uh, fourteen. Four. Ten. Twenty-one. All right, uh, Lachlan, you can see almost as if there are flames that seem to be like flitting and flying amongst the trees, um, leaving little small ignitions of flames in their wake, um, unnaturally. Looks and, like we got some sort of, oh, sorry, go ahead. And I was just going to say there, there are some other members of the town's guard who have now been starting to fight fire and they just like we can't explain it they we put the fire out and it starts right back up uh, looks like there's do? some kinds of uh flame sprites or something like that methods or something uh that are spreading the fire see those little jumping dots there and i try to point some of them out all right so um let's do this every so norb you are doing a fire line um go ahead and show me where you want to put the fire line on this map that we have up here this is this is the grove and it is in flamed here um lachlan you are going to try to point out and sort of like make people understand what's going on with whatever's yeah. whatever's happening with these flames that are flitting about and igniting different parts of the forest what about xanthi and desmond xanthi what are you doing to sort of help fight this this blaze 
Um, I can't see any of the dots, can I? Like the little jumpy What was your ones? perception roll? 10. No, you didn't see it, but but uh, Lachlan is trying to point it out. So perhaps you will uh, after we get some rolls here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep an eye out for those things. And if I see one, I want to sacred flame it. Okay. All right. And Desmond? Um, Xanthi, give me a perception check. Is it possible to like move up and try to get to Nevitzit's, I mean, yeah. Jeru's hut? Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to kind of, you know, move forward and see if I can find him, I guess, knock on his door. Or okay, so you move forward. You're yeah. going to like race forward. Okay. All right. So um, no real roll for that one. But Xanthi, what'd you get for a perception? 21. Okay. Yeah, you start to see what Lock what Lachlan is pointing out as these these little flames are like flitting about and like f almost like flying across open areas to start other fires. Um Norb, give me a give me an arcana check. And Lachlan, give me a um you were trying to sort of like point these things out to people, so yeah, I might try to use. Um, what do you think that would be? I might try to use sacred flame to like hit one. Or to like show where it is, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, just give me an Arcana check as well for this, because we're not quite in combat yet. Hey, thanks, Phantom MJ. Appreciate the gift sub. Much, much appreciated, you guys. Thanks for rating in. We really do appreciate it. It's awesome thanks, to see you guys. Got a All right, sixteen so on my Arcana. 16 on the Arcana, so you start to mold, shape the earth into these fire breaks, kind of uh, dragging and, and moving away some of the vegetation, covering it with earth, okay? Yep. And Lachlan, what'd you get with your Arcana check? Out of 14. Thanks, Phantom. Appreciate it, buddy. 14, okay, so at this point, you can, you can see that there are these um, almost like little flame elemental creatures that are flitting about and now uh xanthi you can see them too you guys watch as desmond takes off to the front door of of uh, jeru's um hut everybody i would like you to roll initiative please as these things now start to come in and converge on you oh boy oh boy huh. we're in a tight spot now Ah. <laughs> uh... Not fun. Not fun being me right now. Are they methods? Yes. You nailed it. Yeah. I'm bad for a guy who's never read the Monster Manual. Really? It's such a good book. All right. Dude, um, I've never read anything but the PHB. Oh, all right. Uh, 25 to 20. 15 to 20. 19. Okay. Anyone else? 15 to 20? Uh, 10 to 15. Baker's dozen. 12 for Lachlan. Baker's uh, dozen. F oh, 13. Uh, sorry, I'm not a baker. Uh, 5 to 10. I got a I'm 5. A, I'm a mason. I also got a 5. <laughs> you guys, that's so cute. I rolled a 1. I rolled I'm a not, 1. I'm not a baker, I'm just baked. Plus 4. 5 for Dez. No comment. 5 for Dez and 5 for Xanthi. And let's get some guards. Oh, nice. Two for the guards. All right, Norb, you're at the top of the order. You can see that these these fiery elemental creatures come out of the flames and start to kind of like converge on your location. What do you want to do? I am going to dash. Okay. Okay. So you're going to use your movement and your action to dash. Yep, I'm going to get all the way up next to Dez, pull my battle axe. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Phantom. That, that is my... Oh, and, and if I can, you know, can I can I see inside this hut now? Am I close enough to see inside of it? Um, The door is closed, so no, you can't see inside. Okay. But you can see that um, it is... Uh, it doesn't appear to be flamed, inflamed yet. Okay. Cool, yep. cool. It's, it, it almost appears as though it's like wet, like dripping with, with moisture. Ah, okay. Um, 
All right, so that's your turn. That brings us to the methods, actually. So this method is going to come in here, and it is going to attack Dez with a claw attack. I rolled a natural one, so it totally misses. Um, this one here is going to, and then when I say this one here, I mean this one here, is going to attack a guard. Uh, that's an 18. Uh, it's going to be... Ooh, okay. Um, this guard is lit on fire and just starts screaming as he runs off into the trees and drops in a heap under the flames. This other method is going to move towards Xanthi. Oops, on so many different screens here. And it's going to make a claw attack against Xanthi. Um, that is going to be only an 11. I think that misses Xanthi as she, as you skirt to the side, <laughs> seen it coming. Um, and then this last one is going to move up towards this guard here and attack, uh, with a 14. I think that hits a guard. Um, that does, it does not hit him. The guards have an AC of 16, apparently. Okay. Um, that brings us to Lachlan. I'm going to, um, pull the battle axe out off of my back. I'm going to step up to this one and give him a little what for. And I will use an advantage because I am replete with them right now. Okay. Uh, it's a good thing. That was a two and that's a 16 plus action. Uh, so 23 total. Yes, that definitely hit. hits. All right. And I will give, oh, I gotta go find a D12 now. Come on, buddy, here we go. I will give this thing 11 plus a four. So 15 point Ooh, of damage. 15 nice. Wow, yeah, nice. That uh that kills this thing. It, it like snuffs it out of out of existence, but unfortunately they have something called death yeah. burst, so it explodes. I need you and Xanthi to roll a DC. Uh well actually let's see, roll a dexterity save. There we go. Roll a dex save for me. Failed. Okay. I'll roll with advantage. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just it just basically explodes into fire. Ten. <laughs> Xanthi, you take five uh, fire damage as your clothes start to ignite a little bit. Um, I would like to use um my favored by the gods ability. Tell us about that. Excuse um, me. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, once per short rest, if you fail a saving throw or miss an attack roll, you can roll 2d4 and add it to the total, possibly changing the outcome. Roll it. Okay. Huh. 16? Yeah, you save. Yeah. You save. So you only take two fire damage as this thing explodes. Lachlan, how about you? Oh, no, I failed my save. Uh, so you take five fire damage as this thing explodes and then is gone. But in its wake, there is a small fire that springs up on this bush. All right, I'm going to use the rest of my movement because I moved one to go there. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I, got, I don't know where that guy, I don't know where the line is. But I'm going to go here so that next round I can hopefully um, do spare the dying on that guard. Okay, uh, that brings us to Desmond. You're at the door to the hut. You might be muted, buddy. Yes, I am muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> I will... Ah. I'm just going to attack this guy with my short sword. All right, do it. Oh, what the heck? I'm going to use one of my advantages. 
smart. Smart, SMRT. Smart. Oh, I didn't need to. Natural 20 on the first roll. Oh, boy. Roll me some damage. 19 on the second roll. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get sneak attack with this, but... I figured I'd go after the crit if possible. You so got the crit. A... So it's max plus your roll. And then add your Short bonuses. Sword. So max is 10 plus um, what Holy would the cow. extra roll be? 10 with a short sword? Wow. Yeah, because it's 1d6 plus 4. It's just the 1d6, then... so it's 6. 6 is... So, oh, and then, okay, not the yep. bonus. Not, okay, you only add the roll. bonus once. Yep. Oh, damn it. I only rolled a 1, so it's 5 plus the 6. Okay, so that's 11. Yep. Um, that's all it had. Roll a, a dexterity saving throw for me Oof, as this thing right. erupts. Just <laughs> Norb, you are protected from it by Desmond as he shields you from it. That's a natural one. Um, you can take two fire damage for a total of seven. All right, two yeah, fire damage. Two fire damage as this thing uh, is erupted, explodes, and as a result of that, oh, no. there is some fire that erupts onto uh, Jeru's. Yeah. Hot. That's a lot of fire. <clears throat> um, that brings us to Xanthi. Jeru gonna be pissed, y'all. Oh man, oh man. This is <laughs> bad. Um, okay. So she is going to We're gonna take a break here in just a second, folks. Five, Hang in. Five, Hang in there. 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, and she is going to sacred flame this guy over here. I love it. Dexterity oh, save? Correct. Uh, I rolled a 16. Oh, man. Yeah, that beats it. Okay. Slightly. Any bonus action or anything, Xanthi? Um, you know what? I'm I'm going to bonus action uh, use my sorcery points to give me an extra spell slot. Oh, and nice. That's all I can do. Okay. Uh, the guards are going to um, try to put the fire out. What, the, any guard that is near one of the um, one of the methods is going to attack. So guard, uh, that's a that hits thirteen hits for sure um, with a spear. Um, Desmond, give me a d six roll for a spear damage attack. A four. Okay. So this guy, so this, um, this one up here takes some damage, but is not killed. And then the one to the south, um, that's going to be, yep, that hits as well. And Norb, give me a d6 roll for some damage. And that's for this combat right here. Uh, five. Okay, five. All right, so that one is still at, uh, Still active as well. Brings us to the top. Norb. I am going to knock on Jeru's door really hard and be like, Hey, Grumpy! There's a fire out here. All the trees are burning. We need kind of, We could use some help. Um, I can't reach anyone. That would be a free action. So it doesn't take you an action to do that. That's just free action. Okay. Interact with an object. Okay. You still have your action, um, bonus action, and movement if you'd like to use any of that. I can't reach anyone. I'm going to attempt to mold the earth where this fire is. Is it like on the side of this hut? It's kind of like on the top. The like, If you look at the, the way the rooftop is constructed, it's like some green and some brown leaves. Um, okay. And those okay. have ignited. Um you yeah, could you potentially know, I, try to put it out somehow. Like you could start to pull some of those leaves down, maybe if you wanted to, to stop it from burning. I mean, there's some potential options there if you wanted to. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blunt, I'm gonna blunt, I'm gonna hit it with the flat of my my battle axe. Just try and like smother it with the with my battle axe. Okay. Um. Yeah. Give me a uh, give me a firefighting roll. Whatever you whatever you think that is. You tell me what it is. Athletics. Yeah, I'm calling it athletics. All I right. Think it's, it's gonna Let's take hear it. Let's see it. Serious Ro pushing. Roll it. That's going to be a 23. Yeah, you take the flat the flat of your axe and you just 
boom, and some of the some of the dry flaming bits fall to the ground at your feet, um, and you can see that you're making some progress on putting the, the fire out. That's that's your action. Um, it's not fully out, but it's uh, diminished for the moment. Do you want to stay where you are? Or do you want to do any movement or anything? Um, you know, I'm going to stay right next to Det. Well, I'm going to obviously get closer to the fire. Uh, okay. But then, yeah, I'm going to stay pretty much right next to Des, kind of as his, as his backup. All right, that brings us to the fire methods. Uh, the one on the left is going to attack the guard. Oh, that's cocked, but it was almost a 20. Um, that is a... Was that a... F 13 to hit the guard. The guard has a... Nope, the guard does not get hit. And the one by you, Lachlan, is going to take a swing at the guard with its fiery claws. It is going to hit... Um, give me a d4, Lachlan. D4 roll for some fire damage on this poor guard. He was just trying to do his job, you know, do what's four. right for the grove. Unfortunately, it's And four. unfortunately, that's all it takes as he goes down, uh, the fire overcoming him. Right in front of you, Lachlan, you watch as these two guys just get incinerated, <gasps> and this fire method kind of turns towards you. Um, there's only two of them that remain, however, and it is now, Lachlan, it's your turn. I would like to, uh, can I take this thing exploding on me? Probably. Um, and this thing's already on fire, Jeebus. Um, I would like to, uh, well, you know, screw it, I'll hit it. Uh, I'll take the, uh, the explosion. Um, I'm going to, can I, um, attempt to, uh, it's not going to help anything. All right, screw it, I'm just going to hit it. I was going to try to get swanky with it. But did you I'm get hit with it. the explosion last time? I did. Okay. Why? Well, I was just going to ask, would you do anything to try to, like, minimize knowing that what might happen? Well, that's what I was tr trying to think. I was like, you know, do I try to bat it away? Do I just grab it and throw it away? But if, anything I do, all that it does really is even if I succeed in getting it away from me, it just means that I lose my action doing that and then next round it's just going to come back at me and i've just lost an action so here's what I'll, here's what i'll do for you if you wanted to go this route you could knowing what you know about them exploding you could take your swing and try to do whatever you can to to dodge, dodge out the of the, so i would give you a, a advantage on your saving throw okay awesome i'll take it i'll take it i like it when you give me advantage mm -hmm. don't get used to it yeah, I hit armor class um, 16. That hits. <clears throat> Go ahead and roll right. damage. I will. And that will be 7 plus 4. 11 damage. Uh, it explodes. And oh. Xanthi, roll a d6 for me for some fire damage for Lachlan. This thing just Six. completely explodes and disappears. More fire. 4? Right. And I got uh, a, I five, got an advantage. So you take, yep. Four. Go for an advantage Ooh, on your deck. Twenty. Net twenty. Nice. So you take half of that. You take two fire damage as you duck nice. and roll out of the way, rolling past probably this little. If you guys remember this area here, um, and when I say here, I mean this. This is kind of where the offerings are made. Yeah. Desmond, you'd place gold pieces there, and I think you guys. I'm really, some uh, I'm really wary there. of rolling on the ground anywhere near <laughs> uh, Jeru's place. <laughs> Oh, touche. That's probably a good idea. Um, and then, yeah, Lachlan, so, do you want to move? Uh, no, I'm going to stay there because I'm going to try to give... Uh, next round, I'm going to throw some uh, <clears throat> mm. spare to die in on these guys. Give me two death saves for these guys. Usually the NPCs don't have death saves, but we'll just... Because you're trying to do a good thing. All right. Uh, and Desmond, well, you're up. I got a five and a two, so I don't okay. Know. So they're not looking good. What are you gonna do, Des? Oh, you're muted again. I'm gonna run up here next to Xanthi, and um, I'm gonna take aim at this guy. Aww. Okay. And I'm gonna yell to the guard, Doc. <laughs> I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna take a shot at him. Nice. Oh, God, the animal. All right, I'm going <laughs> to... That, that, that's not going to hit. Um, 
Oh, it's like an eight. Damn it. Yeah, an eight doesn't hit, unfortunately. Um. You don't have intervention of the gods like Xanthi does, or what? No. <laughs> I had an advantage that I didn't use before I rolled. Um, <clears throat> what else can I do? What else can I do? Uh, Xanthi, you're up next. Yeah, no, I'll just hold here. All right, Xanthi. Oh, hey, Des. <laughs> hey. Uh, she's going to reach out and go, Night fire, night fire, night fire. <laughs> and she's going to try to cast um, her not fire uh, sacred flame. <laughs> All right. And just because I haven't mentioned this before, like this, the, the grove is hot. Like you guys are sweating from the heat of the flames licking between the trees and just emanating, radiating this heat. Um, is it a deck save? It is. Okay. 15 is what? Uh, no, I did not make it. I rolled a six. <sighs> Thanks Give me some damage. Goodness. All right. <laughs> uh, poor guard. Ugh. I'm kind of rolling bad. That's why I yelled duck. Radiant damage. One oh, no. radiant damage? <laughs> One oh my radiant. god. All, all right. Bad. So uh luckily that's all that it, it had left. So it explodes. <laughs> Xanthi, give me a D6 roll for the guard. And I mean, we did tell him to duck. Yep. Desmond, give give me a uh, dexterity saving throw for the guard, please. Just a straight all D20. Right. What'd you roll, Xanthi? A four? Okay. Uh, I rolled a 10. A 10. Uh, he doesn't make it. And uh, he, he erupts bonuses? into oh, flames no. and is killed. Uh, oh, God, the why? tree ignites. <laughs> we said Doc. <laughs> ah. Hey, thanks for the follow, DM221532. Great to see Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all for being here. We do encourage you to give our channel a follow uh, if you'd like to. We appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, so for uh, the moment, all of the <laughs> methods are destroyed. Xanthi, do you do anything else after you've killed this one? And unfortunately, the guard. Yeah, I just lean over to Des and I go, I did not think it was going to go like that. <laughs> he zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll as this all happens, <laughs> you have you put down the threat of these elemental fire starters, and you can see now that this halfling and his brigade of, of uh, water bucket carrying uh, firefighters come in and start splashing the trees. Norb, you throw open, you put the fire out on top of Jeru's hut. You throw open the doors, and you see Jeru just covered in burn marks, and he's laying on the ground, breathing heavily. And he just looks up at you and he says, "What happened? Oh my god! Oh my god!" And that, my friends, is where we're gonna take a break. Oh my god! Oh my god! We need a break. Oh um, so gosh, you guys, that was fun. Um, you guys are firefighting in the grove. Everyone was firefighting. <laughs> nice job, everybody. Um, we have potentially saved part of the grove. Not sure what's up with Jeru. We're going to find out uh, a little bit more about that after the break. We're going to take a five minute break, refresh ourselves and come back for more fun really quickly. I want to make sure that everybody is fully aware that we are giving away some loot tonight, uh, donated by our sponsors at Siege Z RPG publishing. Um, we really appreciate their support. We're giving away the great library, which is a uh, fantastic drop into any setting and any campaign kind of adventure and encounter they've got all kinds of lore for this place some great encounters some awesome maps exclamation mark drawing to get in on that um we really encourage you to uh, to get in on the drawing and support czrpg because they're freaking awesome so i'm gonna also drop in their patreon link go check them out um i subscribe to their patreon because they just create such great content and they're good people so we like to support uh good folks um and that's what we do so yeah, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, you guys. Thank you so much. Great raid from Blue Box RPG. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, we will be back in just a couple of sweet, sweet minutes.
All right, my friends, we're gonna jump back into the action here. Now, my my friends, there is a burning village. Various uh, various components of the village have been burning. You have, as a recap, have made your way, pressed your 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 advance out of the Nevitz Manor, helping to save some of the villagers, not the least of which was Spug Noir, um, who uh, who you were able to bring back to the Nevitz Manor. You then made your way to west to the Inn of the Welcome Wench, where you saw the um, the front of militia members pushing the knolls south, the tide turning. As you passed the Inn of the Welcome Wench, you saw Osler Gundagut and some of the other patrons of the inn fighting off knolls and defending themselves and making a stand, at which point there was a call to action as the grove was burning. Um, you raced in as the heroes that you are and got into the fray helping to fight the fire eventually realizing that this was no natural fire and in fact that there was some sort of elemental force at nature burning the trees and, and causing the fire to take hold as you defeated these fire methods and their their continued expansion of the fire the the fire brigade races in um, starts to put the fire out. They start to uh, it, take advantage of the fire lines that Norb had created with his mold earth. Norb, you open the door to Jeru's hut and you see him laying on the ground, burned over most of his body. The place is just a mess, but you're not sure if it was a mess before this attack or not, because you've never been inside old Jeru's hut, but it stinks. It stinks like burnt hair and other 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 things that you're not sure about. Nevertheless, you grab Jeru, pull him out of the structure as it's burning. He seems to be um, injured. He almost gives off the, the idea that he's injured more than he looks. Like there's something wrong with him. He loses consciousness at, at one point, comes back to, and he just he's talking about some sort of assassin, uh, some sort of flaming shard, um, some, some sort of attack. Um, and then he passes out again. And eventually you bring him back out of the grove. You guys all reconvene in front of the Inn of the Welcome Wench. The fires around the town being put out. The last of the knolls being swept up, killed, or pushed south. You can see now that there is a small contingent of Burns Badgers that are pushing into town from the east. And it converges this small group of gnolls that remain sort of in front of Nevitt's Manor. And there's this sort of, um, what they call it, shooting fish in a barrel kind of scenario where the gnolls just get slaughtered. Whoever, whatever gnolls still remain, some of them sneaking through and disappearing into the night. Um, but eventually the, the attack on Hamlet is repelled. But at great cost, at great expense, and at great loss, there are... Members of the community are now flooding into the streets, calling for their loved ones, looking for signs of, of people who might be injured. There's a there's a massive sort of um, by, bivouac over at the Nevitz Manor where people who are injured are being brought over there and they're kind of setting up like care for them. That might be an opportunity for like Lachlan and others to go over and sort of help to, to care for some of the injured people. Um, you guys probably are, are making yourselves useful, although you have had a long night and people are like random militia members are kind of coming up and like patting you on the back and thanking you for the help that you provided. Um, and and they are, you know, thanking you basically for for helping to save and, and fend off. Osser Gundagut like comes up and like gives you, um, Des, he kind of gives you a hug and like slaps you on the back and he says... Tonight's drinks are on me. And there's like some of the some of the militia people are now in the inn drinking. Others are still on guard. The Burns Badgers have posted up around. Um, what do you guys do at this point as the night is still it's still like the middle of the night, but there seems to be like this rally of townsfolk to try to make sense of what happened. And there you are in the chaos of it all. What would you like to do? Well, um, sorry. 
I guess I don't know where. I, I, are, is anyone hurt? Many. There are many injured people. Are you talking I about your say, group? Yeah, your party. Yeah, I would say I was talking about our close yeah. group in, in individually, but um, I guess Des would be helping out like with the wounded, like getting them to Nevet's place for, you know, for people to be taken care of. Um, just trying to help put out fires. Um, but yeah, totally exhausted, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll uh, happily uh, go around and help with either my medicine skill or my spare to dying can trip. Uh, try and save some lives, try to save some people. Um, I don't expect to uh, stop or, you know, take a breath until like much later when everything has kind of been sorted out. So I'm going to kind of just focus on that and sort of work really hard on just saving as many lives as we can. Um, I'm not proficient in medicine or, or anything, um, but I can, uh, I can try to assist and, and help, um, bandage people up. Um, but really what I want to do is kind of try to get information about like, where did they come from? Like, why do people know why they were attacking? Were they looking for something? Did they ask about anything? Um, that kind of information. So I guess okay. investigation. Yep. Right yep. That works. Give me an investigation roll. Um, Lachlan, you're assisting with medical response. Uh, you, no need to roll on that. You, you have, you're, you are proficient in medicine. Is that right? I am. Yeah. So you're able to provide quite a bit of help in, in stabilizing people who are on near death or like just, you know, helping people feel better about their injuries and giving them sort of that bedside manner that you're so known for. I know. I mean, everybody knows. You're like the Everybody George Clooney of ER. And we all know what George Clooney in ER says. Uh, give me 55 cc's of some, some stat. Correct. Thank you. Xanthi, what'd you roll? I'll always be your George. Six. Six. All right. Uh, and then <laughs> Nora, what are, what are you, what are you rolling when you're not combing your hair? You know, I'm, I'm leaning towards doing pretty much the same thing that uh that Xanthi's doing pretty much asking people what's going on you know what they may have heard the knolls bark or you know their experiences throughout the assault um mm -hmm. where they came from where they saw others going um and then also where <clears throat> people may have gone to hide so i'm going to be looking for people who may be off in separate spots who might be isolated who might not know that the battle's over um, or might be hidden away and, and, you know, trapped. Okay, yeah, roll an investigation. Xanthi, I'm sorry, what did you roll? Six. Oh. I'm really good at talking to people. I find out I a lot a of 12. information. So, Xanthi, you learn a couple of things, though. Um, you learn that there was a massive explosion at the watchtower. Uh, the Burns Badgers had been had taken a, the brunt of the initial assault of Knowles as they had come in from the east and had repelled most many of them. Although there was a host of Knowles that that came through the the open fields on the north side of Nevitt's estate from a, a northeasterly direction and had essentially like overtaken a lot of the behind the front sort of defenses, and that's why there was so much carnage happening in the center of town. Um, there was a massive explosion that nobody can quite uh, figure out what the cause was, but there it, it is said that uh, there were a handful of Burns Badgers that died in the explosion itself. The grove is burning still as the firefighters, led by this um, this young halfling named Marcus Crassus, uh, continue to fight the fires around town. There is a, there's now a bell ringing, sort of like calling people back out into the streets, kind of like the all clear bell, Norb, as you sort of talk to people, you get the sense that there was a massive battle to the east uh, at the watchtower where you can, you look and you can still see that there are fires burning over there. Um, most of, most of town seems to be secure for the moment, but you get the sense that there were close to 20 people who lost their lives in the attack. 
and there are countless knolls littered upon the streets and there are people out there with wheelbarrows like essentially gathering up the knoll bodies which are absolutely disgusting and they're bringing them over to a large fire and burning the bodies um as they're bringing the bodies can i take another look to see if they're dis diseased like some that mm. i i saw early on sure yeah give me a medicine check as you as you kind of like stop one of the one of the wheelbarrows and kind of like examine the body quickly 14 you know it's tough because they're they're burned they're 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 gutted they're stabbed some of them are decapitated and limbs missing and they just look i mean it's just carnage but you do get a sense that some of the um, necrosis that you had seen i don't remember when that was but i remember you saw it at one point um, was it at the abandoned farmhouse? I think it was. I think so. Yeah. And, and I rolled the bodies while yep. everybody else was That's out right. of the house. That's right. So you do see some, like, like rot. Like, just wet rot on some of the bodies that don't seem to be from um, trauma from the fight. Yeah. Hey, Lachlan. Do you see this? And I, I point at it. Are, it, they look sick. I'll head over and check it out. It I looks mean, they're nasty. dead, but, you know, they also look like they were sick. Can I do any sort of uh, medicine or nature check to try and get an idea of what's going on? What's going yeah, on? you don't need to roll. You, you, you get the same idea as, like, there's some sort of necrosis taking place. Um, it's not widespread across their whole body. But Xanthi kind of points it out because she's seen it before and she shows you mm -hmm. what she's talking about. And you kind of you kind of put that in your memory bank and you can see that there there is um, it happens. It, it tends to be like around the neck area and the muzzle. Um, you don't like disrobe the the beasts, I'm thinking, probably like kind of peel back their stuff. But you can see it around their muzzle and their necks, almost like a, a like a, a rotted rash. Well, I would actually I would actually disrobe one to look for a wound that this might if this is an infection that started okay. from a wound or if there's a bite mark of some sort or something sure. like that. Now I'll roll a medicine check. Yeah. If, if you're going to go further than that, then definitely. Yeah. I always go further. <laughs> Scary. It's frightening. Yeah. Uh, so with medicine, that would be a 14. Um, yeah. You peel back the, the armor of one of them, this kind of studded leather armor as you undo the straps and peel it open. And you can see that much of the torso of this individual that had the muzzle and neck Necrosis also has necrosis across their chest and abdomen, mm -hmm. but it's it, they're too mangled to be able to find any sort of like wound that might be the cause of that. You almost get the sense like this is just one more thing that these creatures were dealing with on top of whatever else had had corrupted their minds. All right. Um, I don't have it now, unfortunately. But if I ever get a chance to prep a different spell, let me see, do I have detect poison and disease? Would that tell me something about it? Oh, I could cast it as a ritual though. But I don't know it yet, so. Um, would something like detect poison and disease tell me more about it or would it just tell me that it, there is a disease or a poison there? Um. It kind of depends. It, it could do both, potentially, depending on how... You can identify the kind of poison, poisonous creature, disease in each case. All right. Well, are, are they... So, whoever's in charge of these bodies, like, I'm assuming we're burning about these bodies, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I'm certainly going to suggest to whoever's kind of in charge, whether it's Nevitz or it's the, uh, whatchamacallum, that we should burn these bodies, chop, chop, but that we should take a couple... Uh, and sort of quarantine them away from people. And as soon as I get a chance to um, uh, get some rest uh, and pray a little bit, I'll, I'll have a spell that might be able to tell us a bit more about it. So I will say, be careful how you handle them. Don't touch them with bare skin. Move them away from people. Wrap them up in something. If you can, put them in ice or something like that to keep them a little bit. You don't think burning them is going to be enough, though? Yeah, but I kind of want to get an idea what it is before we burn all of them. So burn the most of them, but leave a couple. I'll try to get like a couple that are not too mangled. I'll try to save a couple just so I can do the the spell when once I get some rest. 
Uh, but we'll oh, so we're more. just gonna we're just gonna chop chop a couple of them, and the rest are just gonna, just burning. Well, burn the rest of them, yeah. Because okay. there's some sort of disease or infection or something here that I can't quite tell what it is, but uh, that's the last thing we need sort of uh, spreading around. So make sure people don't come in contact with it more than they need to. Um, and I will remembering that Spug Noir got splattered with blood from one of these creatures at some point. I will uh, <clears throat> at some point make it a point to go around to Spug Noir and check how he is. If he's feeling anything, if I see anything wrong with him, and I will keep an eye on him uh, over the course of the next, you know, 24 hours or whatever, just to see if anything develops there. Just because I know for sure he was one of the people who got splattered with blood, I remember in that description. So That's what I'd be doing. Okay. Uh, maybe talk to uh, if the uh, people from, uh, if the cut Cutbertheans are around maybe show this to one of them one of the leaders and see what they think okay um as you are all doing this um spug noir is kind of hop kind of limps out he's injured but you can see he's got bandages around his abdomen where he was uh hit with a um sword attack during the during his defense of some of the uh villagers and he comes up to you norb and he's like thank you um for for being there when you were we we could have surely died if you hadn't showed up i, don't, I saw I, you i saw you standing between people in need and 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 vicious dog people and oh man that was awesome you were doing awesome I, of course i was there I, of course i was i would have been there in a heartbeat the moment i saw you over i was like oh my god that's bug noir and he's by himself with um, people who aren't helping him i was like as you're talking he just, he just reaches for he just gives you a big hug and he just oh, kind of whispers and he's like thank you thank you I'll pick him up even i'll pick him up and oh, hold him up okay in the air oh, while I'm oh, hugging oh, him. oh okay he's oh, oh. oh 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 yeah watch, watch the ribs watch the oh, ribs i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll put him down okay thank I'll you pat him on the head a couple times that's better thank you you did a good job. That was, you know, the fire thing. Awesome. Awesome. There's, there's, then I'll there's go to give him a high do. five and then I'll be like, oh wait, I hurt. He, he kind of like raises his hand as high as he can. Uh, you know, I'll just, I'll do a light tap. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a drink later. Sweet. Cool. And yeah. he just kind of like, he kind of like walks off. Um, Lachlan, as you're talking to the Cuthbertines, you get the sense that they are, some of them in, they're kind of like talking amongst themselves off to the side. Uh, Sister Calmera is not with them. Uh, Canon Tyrone is not with them, but there are sort of like the, some of the members that you saw marching with Sister Calmera and, and the Canon down the street are there and you, you went specifically to speak with them. So you recognize some of them, right? And they, they give you sort of this like, uh, the adherents of the old faith they brought this down again just like they did 10 years ago uh, we haven't had a chance to clean this place up but god damn it if it wasn't the elemental forces it, it's got to be and you get this sort of sense that there there's a there's a a vibe that they're sort of like blaming the adherents of the old faith for what happened uh, what exactly, uh, excuse me, I'm new in the area, but what exactly do you mean the, uh, oh, uh, the adherence kind of, of the old faith? The druid and the others. We came here, uh, we came here under, under the protection of the Viscount and told to, to bring the faith to this region as a, as a way to protect it, but still some of them follow the old ways you mean Refuse the people to of the town saint cuthbert yeah look around you can see it see what exactly what am i supposed to be uh, look you're saying that some of these people still worship whatever some old gods or things of that nature and that's what's that's exactly causing right. these things they bring it upon us as we try to bring the word of Cuthbert and common sense to this land to defend well, I, it from evil. They continue to. I don't know to. if you saw, but 
the druid, specifically the druid you just mentioned, got attacked and almost got killed tonight by these things. So exactly. these things are not in league with. They came here for him. And that's part of the problem. And they sort of like melt, kind of like meld away from you at that point. You know, like you just, you start to get sort of these like vibes of this sort of tension where these, the Cuthbertines are sort of blaming the, the adherents of the old faith, which would be, you know, those um, who follow like the, uh, they worship like Biori and some of the old gods. Um, Cuth, Cuthber being sort of a newer introduction to this area with the construction of the church Mm-hmm. And the um, the newer construction of the watchtower and now the keep, um, and you remember you harken back to like Jeru talking about sort of like the the silliness of the viscount trying to meddle in the affairs of the people mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. So it kind of harkens back to like this this tension perhaps going on between some of the different um, beliefs in town. And at this point, there's a there is a sort of a, a message that's being spread through town that there is uh, going to be in an in about an hour's time there's going to be a meeting at the town hall the village hall and people are starting to sort of make their way to the village hall as militia members um and burns badgers are stationed about the area you can see that they're still putting out fires the the grove is now just smoking there's no there's no active flames it's been about an hour since you pulled um jeru from the flames jeru is in the home of one of the one of his uh, companions or one of his friends being t- being cared for um, behind closed doors, sort of uh, un- unseen to anybody else. He's being attended to. I'll, um, at some point I'll, I'll try to catch the eye of each of the uh, other members of the group and I'll say, uh, uh, it's probably nothing, but just uh, I'm getting the feeling that there's some sort of uh, tension going on between the Cuthbertines and some of the older folk, especially Jeru, and they seem to think that Jeru was specifically targeted by these things. So if you hear anything or if you catch any mention of anything in those things, but it'd be good if someone went to talk to Jeru and kind of try to get... Uh, I'll do that. Yeah, because he did mention when we found him that he'd been targeted, right? So uh, yeah. And it makes sense. I mean, if I was a big evil creature of uh, well, the elemental plane, I would target one of the, the uh, goodest I, I, people in a town to try and eliminate them before. Yeah, but do you think that Knowles had the capacity to, to think like that? To think, oh, hey, look, there's no. a druid in the town. So that means there's something or someone behind them. Yeah. It doesn't well, make sense that you know something is controlling a, a huge pack of gnolls and also fire sprites well yeah, they they mentioned that beautiful bastard well that was um, the goblins back at the farm right? that was the goblins uh, though right that was that was, that was oh. the gnolls and the goblins but it yeah. was the gnolls it was actually was you said, remember it was mel yeah. You overheard yeah. Mel, who was like, you tell that beautiful bastard to, you know, piss off. Like, we're going to do our whatever we want kind of thing. We're not following his rules anymore. Right. And they said that they had, the beautiful bastard had sicked the goblins on. On them. The, the men. Oh, uh, Yeah, right. on the bandits. Right. Yep. On the bandits. So the beautiful yep. bastard. Yep. So, so we know is... he's controlling goblins and gnolls. So and that was at been... one point controlling bandits. Is that a right. name that's been spoken around here? Like, do people know anything about that? Something we need to well, sort of suss out. We could ask at this town meeting if anybody has heard the name before. We Hi. could, but something we need to be careful of here before we make any other sort of major move. These things came here tonight because of us and what we did the other day. You think we so? We went out there and we fucked their shit up and then we hightailed it and ran back here and they just followed us here gathered their guys and then this was a retributive strike for what we did so we need to start being careful about what we do because it's no longer just about us and what's going to come back to haunt us but since we're hiding out in this village anything we disturb out there can decide to come running back here right but we were asked by Burns and his badgers to do that 
Sure, but you know, I'm we just saying we, we need to be careful it. about it. No, I know, but we just need to be careful about it. Maybe if we know there's someone on our tail, we don't necessarily run right back here. Or we make sure there's no one on our tail, you see what I'm saying? So uh, all of this we're the... is our fault, is well, what I think you're saying. The thing and she is just is... looks at all of like the destruction and the burned buildings and the corpses. I don't think that we can take 100% of the blame. Like Des said, we were asked to do this. We just did what we were asked, but surely we how we first. did it, how we I, did it. I'm not, I'm not gonna take any of the credit for this. I, yeah, I'm I, not responsible for the actions of these gnolls. I did everything I could to stop these things, and I think we all did. I don't think we should take any of the blame. These things happen. This town has been plagued by these problems for years and years. Let's yeah, let's sure. Not, let's I'm just saying that actions, with... actions have reactions, and if we're gonna take actions, we need to contemplate what the reactions might be to that. It's not just fucking fun and games anymore. It's not just we go out there, we kill some gnolls, and ooh ha, we get paid. Like there's obviously something more that's going on here. We had there's no obviously heavy duty it. pay. No, but I'm saying we know now. So we need to fair. take that into consideration before we make our next move, because this is no longer just, hey, we're going to get paid to clobber a couple of brigands and make the roads safer. Yeah. We There's something there was, bigger. We didn't know there was play. an army out there. Well, we didn't, and that's cool. But now we know. Well, there was an army out there. Now there's an army in the town square getting burned. I'm just saying. Some of the cards have changed. We got to take that into consideration. Yeah, I think uh, personally, and, and maybe I'm a little selfish in this, but uh, you know, we we gave them a little poke, and they came back, and we're like, uh, we're really angry about it. Well, I think we should go back and give them another poke, but this time we should light the poker on fire and get like a hundred other pokers. And, and really just skewer it, whatever this thing is. But we also need to make sure that the town is ready to defend itself and is prepared yeah, we, for what might happen. Do we share we do, smoke. do we share this information about the beautiful bastard with the town? Or do we keep this one to ourselves? Well, I think I they think have a right Norm to know. Already did. Yeah, they yeah, have a right told, to know. I told Rufus. Rufus. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not, I think it's fine if they know it's not like, I necessarily suspect anyone of I think this is foul play in the village, but in a town, but I don't know. Look, first of all, I'm tired as all get out. I feel like I got run over by a team of oxen and then they backed up and ran over me again. Then they backed up and ran over me again. So we're going to finish tending to these, um, the people who need it. When's this town hall meeting thing? Happening like, basically like right now, people are starting to make their way. People who are able are going to the village hall. All right. Well, some of us should definitely be there to listen and see what go goes on. I'm going to stay here, help out, continue helping out. If some of you want to go and check that out. And then after that, I suggest we go and get a little bit of rest because I, I think we're going to be running for a while and we, we certainly need a little bit of a re-energizing uh restful sleep yep yep yeah i'm gonna if you're gonna help out here i'm gonna go i'm gonna go see if i can find jeru and, and, and see how he's doing yeah and try to get his side of the story and sort yep. of what's cooking yeah he I, he kind of dealt with something a little different than everyone else i think and, and i'd really like to get kind of his perspective what do you think um, xanthi and des what do you want to do I guess maybe I should go to the meeting and yeah, see. Yeah, I'll go to the meeting. What's going on? All right, so let's say we uh, reconvene in an hour at the inn. Or Sounds good. Is the, the inn still, still standing? <laughs> good yeah. for that? 
the inn is the inn is fine. They defended the inn. Uh, there's no fire damage. In fact, as you make your way towards the village hall, which is you just kind of get in line and follow people. You don't really know where it is, but you follow the group of people and their work. They walk towards the inn where I think maybe you even are right now, potentially, or you're at Nevitz. But you work you work your way towards the inn, and there is revelry. There's music coming from the inn. There, you can tell that that some of the um, folks who are involved in the battle are. You know they're having rounds on the house like people who have lived are trying to celebrate that meanwhile like some of the more serious folks are making their way and then some of the people who have been doing shots and that sort of thing are kind of coming out flooding out into the street and making their way towards the village hall as well um and so those of you who intend to go to the village hall can do so um it sounds like lachlan is going to continue to to tend to some of the injured folks at the nevitz Mm -hmm. estate the compound yeah, and I'm going to try to keep an eye out, an ear out for any other information I might get about, you know, how the gnolls were acting, where they came from, who, you know, like just kind of try to get a picture of, you know, whatever other information I can get. So as I'm moving around and talking, I'll just sort of keep my ears open and, and pick sure. up anything. Roll an investigation check for me. Investigation. And then, uh, like Norb, you are going to go try to track down Jeru. Is that true? Or are you going to go yeah. to the, the uh, village no, hall? I'm going to... I'm gonna try and find Jeru, wherever he's being kept and being taken care of, and I'm gonna roll try investigation and... check for me. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut uh, you off. Go ahead. I got 18 actually. Okay. Um, Norm, while I'm doing saying? that, I'm also uh, before I go do that, I'm gonna stop by the stream, look for like a nice running spot of the stream, and collect like a like a bucket of cold water, clean cold water, so I can bring it with me, so I can like. Because he he mentioned you mentioned him being burned all over, so mm-hmm. so I'll bring some cold water, some cold clean water, and and then to try and track him down. I got a twelve okay. on my investigation. All right, so you talk to some of the folks in the street, like where's Jeru? Where you know where do they take Jeru? Where is he? Like I want to, I need to speak with him. And you are able to get some in, intel that he's in uh, one of the homes to the south, <clears throat> being tended to. And are you gonna make your way down there? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go down there. Uh, Lachlan, what did you roll? 18. 18 on your investigation check, right? Okay, so Lachlan, you you pick up a couple things. So the main assault came from the east, which you exp- which you sort of ascertained and kind of thought already. Um, there was a massive battle at the, um, the watchtower. Some sort of explosion, which, th- which people are saying was some sort of a alchemist fire like accelerant that was used to um, damage the construction site. And so the construction site that was being worked on has been set back potentially weeks based on the explosion that happened there. Um, there have there were a number of badgers that fell, maybe half a dozen badgers fell in battle. Um, Rufus, of course, was heroic as fuck because he's a badass and he was just cutting down gnolls left and right just kicking some serious ass is the story that you hear mm. um but more beyond that you don't get any sort of like additional detail on the necrosis issue or like disease or anything like that but you get a sense that the the front came from the east and was there anything else specifically that you had hoped to gain from that investigation check that i forgot about no that's fine it was really just okay. sort of getting keeping a, an eye on general yeah you do have an opportunity to look at a couple of additional knolls and not all of them have that weird necrosis some of them do and some of them don't um and you're not sure if that's a contact thing you know like a family group thing or you know like mange from like domestic animals or or wild canids and that sort of thing you're not exactly sure what the mechanism of the pathology is, but there's 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 signs of it in multiple gnolls. It's just not like every one of them. Okay. Some of them look healthier than others, but they're all being burned. Uh, and and there are people at the burn pile as more gnolls are being thrown on, you know, passing around jugs of brandy um, as they kind of celebrate the fact that they're still alive. But you are able to, with your response, to help out many of the injured people, stabilizing them, giving them comfort, and that sort of thing. Um, You do hear more, a little bit more, about that sort of, like, conflict, that inner sort of, like, religious conflict 
but mm-hmm. it's it's just it's very surficial. It's not as blatant as it was earlier in the night when you would talk to the Cuthbertines. Um, Des and Xanthi, the two of you are going to the village hall. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then Norb, as you you go and you knock on the door to the the farmhouse where Jeru is supposedly inside, and and someone comes to the door. Yes. What is it? I'm here to uh, to see Drew. Is he doing okay? No, he's not doing okay at all. Come, come in. Here, I brought you, cold water. I'll bring. They the bring bucket. you inside. Yep. They they usher you inside, and they they guide you back to this room. And and Jeru is in the bed, and you can see that there are three um, people that are two men and a woman who are sort of like attending to him. They have his shirt open. Um, he's he's essentially exposed from the waist up. Um, his sort of like gray chest hair, um, sort of old man body burned and singed. Um, and they are sort of like putting compresses on him and like trying to clean the wounds as best they can. But he he has burned over most of his body and he kind of just looks up at you. There's something, something that burns inside me. And he sort of rolls over and you look at him and you can see that there's almost like this glow of flame inside his chest i don't know what this is oh boy um and then he kind of lays back down and they cover it back up um but it, it was almost like it was glowing from inside his chest like there was an ember glowing that he's not familiar with and then he reaches up and he grabs your wrist he says does the grove still stand it's not totally gone no it's, it's still there whatever it, that elemental assassin was it they took my staff it destroyed my home and then he just kind of loses consciousness oh man and they sort of they're you know they're they're attending to him they're like kind of like almost like fawning over him to try to help him you can see that you look around they have symbols of the old faith all around the room and they're trying to like channel as much of the um spirit of the old ones as they can to help him you know i'll I'll do whatever i can to help them do whatever they're doing but i'll also like start tearing strips of cloth and like soaking them in the cold water and laying them on them to cool them down a little bit you know do whatever else i can to help and i'll ask them like he mentioned his staff was taken they don't really know like they they don't they don't know what's not um, much we can tell you would they let me look at the glowing ember in his chest again yeah, you can take uh-huh. a look at it. You could kind of like peel back like the the bandages a little bit and look, and you can see just like this glow within his chest, almost as if, if there's I, a flame burning. If I put my like hand on his on that, does it feel warm to me? Yes, it's hot. Okay, and is it is there an opening anywhere there? You don't see one. Okay, and then what is this something I've ever read about or could have could have heard about? through other channels while studying or anything like that? Ooh. Um, roll an Arcana check at disadvantage. It's very unlikely. The DC is extremely high on this, but we'll, there's always a chance. An 11. No, nah, you don't, you're, you're at a loss for what this, there's no, there's no like open wound, but there's obviously something inside of him. He taught, he spoke of, before he passed out, he spoke of an elemental assassin of, or some sort of presence. But he is completely unconscious right now as they attend to him. He looks okay. as if he's feverish. You know, he's sweating and he's, uh, he's kind of like agitated, but he, he doesn't look like he's dying. He just looks like he's in a lot of discomfort. Okay. All right, well, uh, I, I will leave word with these people to let them know they can find me at the inn. If anything changes, to let Jeru know that I'll be at the inn if he wants to contact me for any reason. Um, and to tell Jeru, like, what little I got from him, his staff was taken by some elemental assassin. If I see his staff, 
I'll bring it back. Awesome. And uh, thanks, Bleak Season, for all the gift subs that you just threw out there. Much appreciated, buddy. Hell yeah. The guild. The guild grows. Um, all right, so Xanthi and Desmond, uh, you head to the the village um, hall. And there are a lot of people packed into this small hall. It is a very clean Spartan uh, building. There is a table in the front of the building. It's this long sort of, actually, I'll bring it up on the map just for the heck of it because we can see where it is. Um, you guys are at the village hall. It's this long house kind of style building. And there is a, there are a group of people, including uh, Kenter Nevitz, who, who was severely injured, if you recall, and is, is barely holding on. Um, Tero, uh, Canon Tehran from the uh, Church of St. Cuthbert is there. Um, uh, Osler Gundagut is there. They're sitting up at this table up there. They're, typically, Jeru Ashstaff would be there, but he is not there currently. Um, and there are a couple of other individuals there, including Rufus, who is, they're all kind of like sitting in front of the, of the group there. It's like standing room only there. Are, there are benches, almost like a church pews that are filled with people. And then along the sides of the building, there are people like watching and listening and they start to talk about like what happened and sort of like what the damage that has been done. There were a number of buildings lost. There were about a dozen people who lost their lives, including, uh, or in addition to uh, about six badgers that lost their lives defending the eastern flank. Um, and they get into this and they're talking about like what happened. And at one point, someone stands up and says, it's because of the old faith that they've come to fight us again here to find us and to take us out. It's because of their beliefs. The Cuthbertians would never allow this. And then like the old faith people be like, the Cuthbertians have brought this upon us by building these Viscount structures and churches and there's like people start arguing amongst themselves as you're standing there sort of watching what's happening um canon tehran who is at the front is like calm yourselves calm yourselves but they don't seem to be listening and it's just sort of like getting into this argument between um the followers of saint cuthbert who seem to be blaming the worshipers of the old faith that their archaic ways and antiquated beliefs kind of like brought this attack upon them kind of hearkening back to what happened 10 years ago with the the evil at the temple of elemental evil and there's the adherents of the old faith who are are blaming the cuthbertines and the viscount for having sort of put a target on hamlet by building the church and all this you know so there's like this argument that happened and then you watch as um, uh, Xanthi, you recognize a uh, devil uh, from the D&G Mercantile who comes in and says, it's those adventurers who came here, who went out and attacked the gnolls and brought this upon us. And people are like, yeah, and they start like, and then some of them are like looking at the two of you as you're standing there, like almost like accusing you guys. And you're sort of like, like backing off possibly a little bit and we're going to kind of like do a little bit of a time dilation at this point because at this point you see as um jeru ashstaff leaning on um leaning on norb as they as they burst through the doors and jeru ashstaff says silence all of you these people have saved us they have stopped the attacks for now. Do not blame them for what happened here. And he kind of lets out a and then he says, Does it be like calm, a calm yourselves. Ah, good boy, sit me down. He turns to you, Norb, and you kind of guide him to a chair and he sits down and the people are just sort of like arguing amongst themselves and it sort of like erupts into this chaotic argument among the people that are inside Desmond and Xanthi and, and Norb as you guys are all sort of in this environment now where these people are arguing is there anything that you do God, guys everybody sounds really angry well it I don't blame them something horrible has happened but it's been happening for a while this didn't come out of nowhere it's this was going to happen 
regardless of what we did. After I so get uh, Drew sat down, Drew, Drew, Drew mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just take my battle axe out and kind of set it down on the ground and kind of sit down with it between my legs. It's still covered in the guts of many gnolls, by the way. <laughs> I just feel like this is somehow our fault. I mean, I wanted to be a hero, but it just seems like everything is worse right now. Yeah, it does feel like that. But it's it's because we can't see the other side of it yet. What was coming was what came today was coming for some time. I had heard about it before we even got to town. And the fact that this town hadn't heard of any of it was a mystery to us. I mean, Burns, they sent us out to fight, you know, raider, you know, uh, bandits. bandits, and we found the gnolls, and they tried to kill us, so we killed them, you know? What can you do? I suppose. They, they don't, they're not making distinctions between villagers and Cuthbertines and old faith. They're they're going after everything and everyone everywhere. Here, here. Omelets yeah. is just here. It was here in the way. Old man Des speaks the truth. <laughs> he is wise. You should tell all these people that. They're not gonna listen to me. Oh, I thought you were I thought you were telling everyone. You're from that. here. You know, like who else should say it? I suppose you're right, but I think what these people need is someone to believe in and That's, I don't want to be that. I'm not their hero. Isn't that why you came here? To save people? To be a hero? Not really. No. I mean, I... it's where I find myself now, but it wasn't what I set out to do. Why did you come here then, Des? For more than one reason. I couldn't stay where I was. And it had been a long time since I had been here, and so I figured it was as good a place as any. I think you are selling yourself short and you could be the hero that they need. We could, the four of us could. And, and I think it's now, you know, our job to figure out what's happening here and to save this town for whatever hand we had in causing it or just stepping into the middle of it it's our job to end it I agree um as you guys are having this conversation, you hear a gavel just slam on the table to disrupt this argument. As you are having this very intimate conversation, which was beautiful, by the way, this th the arguments are flaring about you, and the gavel slams down on the table, and you just hear Kenter and Evitt say, Everyone, leave and, and, and go to your houses. See to your loved ones. Ex 
accept the fact that you live while others have died here tonight. Cast no accusations. Bury the curses. Rest. Tomorrow we rebuild. And everybody's, everybody kind of like heeds his word and he, he kind of, you watch and you can see him with your intuition that he kind of like almost collapses back after that last outburst. Of course, you remember he was extremely injured and people just sort of like start to break up and they start to leave. Some of them very frustrated and angry and talking about like the Cuthbertines and those, those, those Cuthbertine bastards putting a mark on the omelet like that target on our backs. And then there's others that are like, it's just the same old shit with these adherents of the old faith and bringing down the, the the wrath of the elemental evil. You know, there's just like all this anger and people just kind of disperse. Some of them are like still come up and like, thank you so much for saving my family. You. And you sort of like, you acknowledge it, but it's hard to acknowledge because of the tension. But they, but eventually things disperse. And, um... Jeru is, is, is whisked away in this whole thing and makes his way back to um, wherever he was he was staying. Someone comes up to you and it is one of the Burns Badgers. At this point, uh, Lachlan, you have sort of made your way back to where, where the sort of things are breaking up and you meet up with, with the party and one of the one of the Burns Badgers comes up to you guys and says, "Rufus, Rufus uh, seeks to speak with you. Either this eve or in the morn. There's much to discuss." And then he w walks away and like hurries off. We'll be there. I, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty tired. I can barely stand. Oh, I'm just hungry. Uh, I forgot about this. And, and Xanthi digs through her bag and she pulls out a dagger and she, she hands it over to Des. I found what's, this for you. What's this? Um. Where, oh, is this from? I I found it, you know, like near that farmhouse and i think it's really special so it looks very nice thank you i wanted to cheer you up you know because of the aging thing um i forgot about the age yeah i, f I almost forgot about that oh i'm sorry With i didn't mean to remind you <laughs> everything that was going on it just kind of I suppose it's after all of the dying and the fighting, it's hard to kind of cheer someone up. But this is really nice, though, Santi. Thank you. You're welcome, Des. Should so we see if the the what all went down? Standing? What all <laughs> went down at this uh, hoot nanny? Just you can, yeah. You don't have to roll for all of it. Just. You tell yeah. you give me the the download, okay? Cool. And it corroborates, you know, largely what you had been kind of hearing foment amongst yeah. the 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 people that there's just you know in a time of strife, like people start to look for like explanations, right? And they start to make accusations about why something happened the way it did, and it's and they try to find a way to sort of explain it, and maybe that's blame. Like some some of the people who are of weaker intellect, maybe will start to blame other people for the for the things that happened to them. Um, eventually, you make your way back to the inn, and there is music playing. There, uh, it, it goes into the night. At one point, the stable boy. Ono, who works for Jeru uh, for um, Osler, comes up to you and says, "Drew has has asked for your 
up for your presence the, in in the morning if if you would be willing to meet with him he I'm, I fear for his safety but he wishes to speak with you the four of you is he in need of healing how is he doing the healers have have worked with him but but you could bring some of your divine inspiration upon the matter that could be very much appreciated do you wish to see him now if he's in bad shape i would i uh, would rather see him now however there's not much i can do he, before i get some rest he so is you know. he's he not sick? not well i, I fear for him Yeah, we'll go. Well, I'll go. You don't have to come, but I'll go. No, I will go. So the four of you decide to divert yourselves for the moment. Again, it's it's so late in the evening, but the the request, the 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 gravity of the situation draws you to to the 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 house where he rests. And mm -hmm. he he they, the people of the house, the owners, bid you in. And the four of you uh, take counsel with Jeru, and um, he he divulges to you some things. At this point, he confides in you. Um, he, you get the sense that he, um, he feels as though perhaps his days or his time—not even days—like he's on his deathbed. And so he, he, he like, it's very dramatic. He reaches out, he like grabs on to Norb your arm as he's speaking. Uh, he divulges that he has been sent to Hamlet by the Druids of the Gnarly Wood to keep an eye on the region and to basically be a canary in the coal mine for the rise of elemental evil that could threaten to overtake this land again as as though it tried to overtake 10 years ago he says that he was stationed here to as a sentinel of sorts he confides in you that the knoll attack was merely a cover for whatever happened to him, because what attacked him was no knoll. He continues to make this description of a of a of a fiery elemental assassin that pierced him with some unknown weapon that now has a an ember that's lodged inside of him that he has no knowledge of. They his staff, his powerful druid staff, was stolen in the process. Finally, he informs you that there is an associate of his named Shiral, a half-elf druid adherent of the old faith, who is also an agent of the of the druids of the Gnarly Wood, who has worked with him, who has been sent to Nulb. To keep an eye on things, but has he has not heard an update from Sheral for nearly a month. To him, it is both peculiar and troubling. He su he suggests that if there was an attack on Jeru here in Hamlet, that that Sheral's safety may be in danger in Nulb as well. He tells you of a hidden compartment in his hut where you will find some items that will help you and he suggests that you deal with this if if you can be trusted as heroes he knows that it is not your fault or at least he believes that that you are still heroes and that you still have a role to play he kind of gives you this idea that he's he's seen this in you from when you first arrived. Um, but not wanting to be too prescriptive in what you did, he let you make your own, you know, go about your own business. But he, he now leans on you heavily and kind of lays this on you, which is heavy. 
um, that there is something here to deal with. But he asks that you will seek out Sherelle. And with that, he kind of like goes back into this, not like a, not really a coma, but just like a unconsciousness. Can I do an arcane check on what this ember thing is inside of him? Sure. And if it's something that could be cured by like healing or magical means or um Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Nat 20 for <laughs> 24. Yeah, I mean you Whoa. you have with with as you sort of look him over and and he's unconscious now but you kind of peel back his 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 um shirt and look below it and you can see like this glowing fire in his chest you get the sense that there's this is an arcane injury of some kind and although you're not familiar with the type of arcane injury that it is that there's got to be like in your heart of hearts you believe that there is something that could cure Jeru from this affliction okay um I'll I just like I reach out and I touch it and and I want to heal it so I will cast cure wounds um and see if that does anything you channel the energy inside your body this innate magical energy that somehow you manifest continually seem to to dig from the core of your soul and you channel it into Jeru as best you can with the knowledge that you have of of these powers and you get a sense that it gives him some sort of like respite from the pain momentarily but you also notice that he's he's continually sweating like he's in a fever of some kind but he he kind of like calms himself and falls asleep and the four of you at that point, you know, th I mean, it's like late in the night at this point. There's been a battle. There's you guys were having dinner when the battle started. Then there was this huge battle. You guys had multiple encounters around the city. You saved Hamlet as heroes of Hamlet. There's disagreement about the nature of what happened between the different factions in town. You've been bid to um, take counsel with Rufus possibly the next day because you're you're just totally spent at this point and you get a sense that Jeru while not in a good place is in good hands at least right like he's he's with his people his the people who who worship Biori and who worship the old faith and who can pray with him or pray upon him um in the P-R-A-Y, not the P-R-E-Y. And so you guys eventually make your way back to the inn where there's drinking and revelry, revelry happening, but perhaps that's not what you're feeling at this point. You're feeling like the weight, the gravity of the situation upon you. And um, is there anything that you wish to do before you retire for the night as this is happening? Let's go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Lachlan. Let's start with you. Um... Once he sort of falls back down and, and Xanthi does her thing of, of trying to heal him, uh, Lachlan will pull out his uh, his holy symbol and just sort of quietly say a little prayer um, next to him, basically saying, calling out to the Stormcrow and saying, uh, Stormcrow, you, you watch over this land, you survey everything that lies below your domain, everything that touches or is... Uh, lies below the sky and, and the clouds and the storms and the rain and this man watches over that domain also this man's domain is the land beneath yours it is the trees and the streams and the lives of all the people who are here and i i ask you very humbly please to to watch over him um as he watches over this land and the people here uh, whilst we attempt to um, bring him relief from his pain don't put little symbol away anyone else made your um, way back to the inn perhaps I think Xanthi's too tired to 
like do a journal entry or anything. Um, and and she'll probably just go up to her room and just flop on the bed, just totally like out of it. She's exhausted all of her spells. <laughs> well, actually not all, but you know, all the regular ones. Okay, uh, Norb. You know, Norm's going to have listened to everything that was said, to maybe taken some notes about, like, his elf druid friend, half-elf druid friend in Narulb? Nuralb? How'd you Nolb. say that? Nolb. 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 It's like Norb, but it's Nolb. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> so, so I took some notes on that, you know, and then I also will have... Oh, I got to correct my notes. I spelled that very wrong. Um... I, oh, I had another thought. I lost it. That's okay because as you're as you're returning to the inn, Spug Noir comes up, obviously drunk, and he he hands you a flagon of ale, and it sloshes and spills all over the front of your. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, cheers, my friend. <laughs> cheers. I'm glad you're doing okay. You look a lot better than you. I. I oh my goodness! I take that back. You should go to bed. Yes, I, I, I should. Oh my goodness. I'm too um, happy I'm to gonna, be alive though. Gonna, and he just sort of grabs you and like, he's gonna try to dance with you basically, like around the, as the music is playing and the people are singing and just like revelry kind of grabs you and like pulls you into the the group. All right, That's I'm good. dancing. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna dance for a little bit, and then I, you know, I'm gonna sneak a chance, give him a little spin, kind of turn, head over to the bar, go to the bartender, and say, "Cut him off, no more. <laughs> Bring him water. He needs water now." Um, is are the rooms in good enough repair? Can I can I can I go to bed here? Oh yeah, the the place is. They did agree. You guys started it out, but then Osler and the rest of them defended this place. It's it's in perfect shape. Except oh, for so that one door that doesn't windows. open. Yeah, there's broken windows. There's one lock that's melted that they're going to have to replace. But other than that, they're going to have to replace some window panes. But it's... Osler is very happy that things worked out the way they did. Sweet deal. Sweet deal. You can see blood stains on the floor of the inn, like where the gnolls were killed and... You know, there there was a dead, uh, you know, a dead uh, guard that was, you know, fell there. But other than that, it's it's in great shape. So you're able to go back up to your room, and it's fine. You retire to your room, um, Des. Um, Des is just gonna walk through the um, tavern, just kind of a little bit of in a daze, just in a little little bit, just like checking checking for familiar faces. Does he see Elmo around? Uh, roll perception check. <laughs> Not good. Uh, like It's like a six, probably. You don't see Elmo, but he comes Eight. up to you and throws his arm around your back and like pat, pats you on the back. Says, we did pretty well, didn't we? <laughs> Fucking we did. knolls. I want to I want to thank you again for the healing that you gave me. That of really course. Helped. Look, uh, if you intend to go back out after more of them, I'm with you. Count me in. That's that's the type of spirit we need around here. Not, not this divisiveness, right? Agreed. All right. Let me buy you a drink, and then I'm I'm going to bed. Also agreed. <laughs> um, I'll just buy him and whoever's at the bar a drink and stumble off Be with a beer. Fi five silver. With okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll bring, I'll bring one that, of my own to bed. Yep, a bed beer. I love it. Mm -hmm. have, with uh, that, my friends. Thing. Oh yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Just one on. last thing. Last thing I'd like to do is on the way back, I'll I'll swing by the uh, the grove, uh, just to see sort of where things are if they've put out the fire and everything, um, and if I see that. Uh, Giroux's offering plate and all that stuff is still there. Um, I, I will, I will take it, and I will move it 
you know, sort of out of the grove and closer to like, you know, maybe close to the inn or something like that, but somewhere where you can sort of put in where people can uh, maybe if they feel like it, you know, put some offerings in there in, in the hopes that maybe it can sort of help him. Uh, I'll be the first one to uh, to do something as I, wherever I set it up, maybe close to the end so I can keep an eye on it kind of thing, or even if it's just close to the entrance to the grove or something, uh, sort of set up whatever's left and I'll put a gold piece in there and, you know, just, uh, you know, can't hurt if uh, people uh, feel like coming by and dropping off some offerings and stuff, maybe it'll, uh, it'll help them. Okay. You also remember what what Jeru said about um, there was something for you in the in his hut. So yeah, that's right. Remembering that you would go to the had. hut, you would pull back the the floor matting, and you would see that there's a chest hidden, and you would pop open the chest, and there are three healing potions, common healing potions in there. There is a strange bottle that you're not sure about. It looks to be almost like a carafe, but with a lid on it, like a thermos. And then there are a pair of boots that seem to be of fine elvish craft. And as you gather those things up and head back to the inn to take your rest, the rest of the party retiring for the night, the revelry going on into the early hours of the morning with the sun rising and people still celebrating the fact that they survived this attack we my friends will survive the fact that we have survived another episode of heroes of greyhawk and uh that was fantastic you guys nice job some really good uh action and rp moments in that so thank you so much i will be smiling in my sleep tonight <laughs> so thank you and thanks to the chat for hanging out and getting involved and cheering us on That's the right. raid from blue box rpg the gift subs from bleak and phantom and others and just you guys seriously the cheering and the support that you provide to us is so fantastic uh we appreciate it and we are excited because we get to then turn around and commission some sexy sexy character art that's on its way from a jose ortiz uh very very excited if you don't know jose go check out jose's stuff i just dropped a link in there the art station of his we've got some fun art coming our way so um with that said players holy shit great job you have kicked some serious ass as this whole catastrophe unfolded in Hamlet, which I had no idea was going to happen until the the way that things happened at the abandoned farmhouse with the Knolls. Um, so well done with, uh, with really leaning into all of that. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to give away some stuff. Um, what are we giving away again? We give are away, giving away, give away, give away the then. library. Yes, the library. We're going to give away the great library. So if you're interested in getting this awesome content from our friends at CZRPG, the folks that have been with us for, what, Ashley, like two years now? Supporting yeah, our I stream. Yeah, I mean, longer than that, I think. Yeah, like, they have been and with forever. us from the very beginning, um, have been donating digital content that we're able to give away to folks who are hanging out with us. Exclamation mark drawing to get in on the action. We've got a, a pile of folks in here, but you've got a chance. You've got a chance to win. I swear it. Get in on the action. We're going to go ahead and give away this stuff right now. So, Ashley, if you wouldn't mind with the five second countdown, please. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. And Cardman, <laughs> you son of a gun, 2467. How Definitely does he do that? I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how Cardman does it, but Cardman. You are I called lucky. it before you even rolled it. Son of a gun. Nicely Jeez. done. Cardman, I will reach out to you, DM. Well, you I don't was... have like him on speed dial at this point. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I should. I Great. really should. I hey, congratulations, you guys. Really appreciate it. We are going to raid into our friends at Dork Tales. So um, stick with us here. Uh, we've got uh, we've just got a couple of announcements. Come back tomorrow. We're going to be playing Nuvarn with our friends uh, Dungeon Mr. Ty, Ashley Udahime, Lamar the Con Guy, myself. Awesome, wondrous uh, place. It's a great setting. Awesome system. We're having a lot of fun with it. Ashley's crushing it with the uh, the playing a sentient rock. 
Sweet. It's so much fun, and we're uncovering some really crazy shit. So um, thank you so much for doing that. We've got a bunch of new stuff coming up in 2023 that Bleak talked about, including more Vason. We've got a Mothership RPG. We've got more uh, Heroes of Greyhawk. We've got more Shade Song. There's a lot coming on. Monday Night Mayhem is going to be strong, and we're really excited. If you want to get involved with any of the stuff that we do over here, jump over to our Discord, hang out with us. We uh, we, we want to get to know you, and we want to play games with you. So just that's just the fact of life. So get in on the action. Um, we're going to go ahead and raid our friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Let's give Dork Tales some serious love. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It means a lot. It really does. Good God. You guys are awesome. Bye.